time these two teams played, 1983. Denison won it 35-15. And we're underway from Denison. Up to the 20. Wasky finds a hole, breaks it to the 35, and that's where the offense of the Tigers will start out at the 35-yard line of Denison. Wasky with a fine return, and he will be the split end on offense. Newell, number 88, will be your tight end. That offensive line will have a freshman in it. West, number 76, at tackle. The right tackle will be Bennett. The left guard, Davis. The right guard, Wilson. Vincent will be your center. He's a senior, 6'2", 10, over the ball, number 55. The quarterback, a question mark, a junior. 6'4", 180, Larimore. He did not throw a pass all last year, number 19. The backfield is Naranjo. Kelly's of All-American fullback number 27. They play out of the eye of formation. He's up close. In motion, Wasky. Straight ahead. Big opening to the 40. Breaks in the secondary. Picks up nine yards to the 45. So the first play, nothing fancy. They go right at him. Kelly's your ball carrier. 5'10", 185. Stapleton on defense makes the tackle for Dennison. Kelly, All-American fullback last year, gained over 1,000 yards. And you can see that time he had a good high leg kick and he just had a low center of gravity. Nothing fancy, just up the middle, fought his way through the line, found the hole and just took it for what it was worth. In this case, eight yards. Second and short, they run a pitch to the near side. Picked up the first down, he's gang tackled just inside Denison territory. Barth. Chris Barth, the tailback, 6'2", 195, only a junior. Holland makes the tackle. Of course, Holland, number 55, Denison's all everything on defense. He'll be the key this year to the big red defense. Oh, the Denison defense, a lot of people are saying they're going to overshadow the single wing this year. A lot of strength in the middle of the defensive line, the linebackers on back, and uh, they're expecting a lot of good things from the defense, so they've yielded a first down in two plays from scrimmage. Barth in motion. Laramore going to put it up in the flat. A safe pass incomplete at the 45. Brings up second and 10. Tim Montgomery on, de on defense. For the, for Dan Newell. the big red Newell, the tight end, who is a tall man. Montgomery. Newell 6'4", 210, but Montgomery had him man to man. Montgomery 6'2", himself, so it wasn't that much of a mismatch. But the ball may not have exactly been on target, but a good defensive play brings up second down. Montgomery's that defensive back along with number 14, Stapleton. And number eight, Wade. Of course, Wade went to Lakewood High School locally. And Jones, the other defensive back, number seven. They'll look at a second down and ten. They'll keep it on the ground to Kelly. And he gets a couple yards at most and a big defensive stop. Again, led by 55, Holland. Oh, just a nice play. As he shot the gap really well. And uh, they seem to be working on the right side of the Dunnison line right now. Leon is used for... Watch Hampton Sydney. Three running plays have gone over the right yard side, and they've picked up a total of 13 yards. They're in Denison territory now, and always the first couple plays, maybe you've got some nerves and jitters out there, and uh, maybe this last play is indicative, indicative of the Denison defense. Coach Joe Bush in his second year at the helm of the Tigers. They won 8-2 last year, came in second place in the old Dominican Conference. We look for a pass here. Going for it all down the middle. Great catch is completed. The Barth is inside the 10 down to the 8. Well, that time, Barth took it right away from a defender for the big gainer in the first down. So the young man, a junior, who only did not yeah, throw no any passes at all last year, that time, he Back drills it to Barth deep. Well, that time, as you can see, they flooded the side with three receivers all on that side of the field, and they just overpowered the Denison zone. I guess it looked like they were playing zone. And they had too many men covering too many men. There was some confusion there. Barth turned back to the quarterback and came back to the ball nicely and just threw it right between the numbers. First down and a scoring opportunity as it's first and goal for Hampton Sydney. They'll give the on a counter to Kelly. Straight ahead inside the five. David Kelly, the ball carrier. Tackle made by Grant Jones. In the old Dominican Athletic Conference, Hampton Sydney, or Dominion, excuse me, they won it back in 82 and 83. So they had tasted the championship fever. They go out of the power eye. Barth is the top of the eye. And in motion, Kelly. Barth. Push it, fumble in the end zone. It'll be a touchdown, Hampton Sydney. 
Newell comes up with the touchdown. Dan Newell, number double eight, comes Fumble up with the uh, recovered fumble. The, the defense, the I thought uh, they Newell. were going to get in on the run. It looked like Kelly had the, the leg drive going into the end zone, and he was hit sharply. Holland, among others, at the line. The ball popped free into the end zone. It was like a basketball jump ball. First one on it was going to make the play, and it was Newell. So we'll call it a three-yard touchdown McCockley-type Super Bowl play. And at 11.57 to go in the first quarter here at Deeds Field, Hampton Sydney leads Denison 6 to nothing as we have the extra point attempt away. And it is good with the kick for Hampton Sydney. Point after by Jimmy Hondrulis. That's Jimmy Hondrulis, number 12, with the kick. And that's going to make the score 7 to nothing. Now Hampton Sydney leads Denison as we'll wait for the Big Red to get their first possession of the season after you watch this cable five timeout. Honduras getting ready to kick off to Denison. Jimmy We've got uh, three players Hampton back deep Sydney. for the Big Red leading the way back there in the center. Mark Marson, the one you really want to watch. Number 17, a Utica grad, a local product. He's in the center of the three. Also back deep for Denison. We have number nine, Tim Montgomery. And on the near side, uh, 31, I believe is the number. But it's going to be well short, taken by an Upman. I believe that's Strasbaugh. For uh, Dennison, knowing number 86, runs laterally and gets about two yards total on the return as he gets to the 35-yard line. Or check that, that was not Strasbaugh. There was Strasbaugh, he's wearing 85. Remember Brian from another local product from Licking Valley High School. As we seem to have one or two from every Licking County High School plays for Dennison. Uh, one of the best hands I've seen from a high school receiver in quite a while. Caught the uh, kick, even though he wasn't supposed to, and put it in the center of the field. And here comes the wing. Single wing for Denison, of course. A 5-2 defense for Hampton Sydney. It's Adams. He gets a yard at most. And the defense rises to the occasion. Jim Bell. Jim Bell, your tackler, number 89. He's a linebacker, the junior, 195. Of course, when you talk about the Denison offense, you're talking about two very experienced people in the backfield, Dennis Kohler and Mark Marston. But Chris Adams, who's the key to the single wing, has some experience, but not that much playing time. And that's the big question mark position. It's the key cog in the offense, but that's also the biggest question mark for Denison's offense. Bodar over center. Kohler. Kohler straight ahead. A couple, and that's all again. Two running plays. Picks up about four, we'll call five yards. Ball 35. That's Kohler from Zanesville, Ohio. Pryor in on the tackle. 5-2 defense for Hampton Sydney. Zanesville High School with the new head coach this year. I don't know if he uh, was talking to Toller over the offseason or what, but they have gone with a single wing this season for, and, uh, for one of the bigger high schools in the eastern part of Ohio. That's quite an accomplishment to see them going back to the wing. Dennison needs a long five. The run of power sweep coming at you as Adams gets these blocks. He gets the first down. He's at the 50 to the 45 out of bounds at the, we'll call it the 43 yard line. So Adams got good blocking by that offensive line, gets big yards and a first down. Well, we've seen him go to the right side and up the middle. This time they just brought it back, like I said, with the power sweep. You had plenty of blocking. That's one thing Coach Piper likes to say about the single wing. You've got 11, 10 blockers and one ball carrier on the field at any time with all the guys in the backfield. Unbalanced line, of course, is the mark of the single wing. The last major college team to run this single wing is 1969, and that's Princeton. First and 10, Big Red, they trail it, seven zip, first quarter. Inside handoff, Marston, nowhere, he'll lose about two yards. Mark As Marston had no place to go. Tackle made by Gang tackle that Graziano. time. Graziano, number eight, in and on the stop from the defensive back. He's only a sophomore, 170 pounds, 5'10". You gotta compliment Hampton Sydney. They seem to have the fundamentals of the single wing down. A lot of teams that you only have one week to prepare for a game and try to get ready for the single wing compared to a wishbone or 
a split eye formation, it's very difficult with so much deception as I'm sure you're seeing. But uh, once again, the first ball game of the season, that advantage for Denison probably has been negated. Adams turns the corner, gets a block, gets the first down, stays in bounds and ridden out of bounds. Let's see where they put it. They'll put it right at the 30. Adams it's a second carrier. consecutive first down. Adams down running well early in the season. He's doing a nice job, too, thinking uh, the cut one way or the other, balancing off of his feet. If you'll watch, it looked like he was going to dip it in two or three times, but he's reading his blocks well, making the move outside, getting away from the containment, and he's, like you said, picked up two first downs uh, rushing in big plays for Denison, and it's now just outside the 30 with a first and 10. Big Red yet to put the ball up in the air. Last year, the Big Red got off to a slow start. They lost their home opener to DePaul last year. In fact, they were shut out. But after that, they reeled off undefeated season and again won their conference. Deception coming your way, Adam. And that time, Sidney was ready. He hits him at the 30. He falls forward to the 28. Compliment uh, Tommy Griziano for uh, Hampton Sydney, and he had some help also in there by uh, Bell. Bell. And Tommy Graziano they held their own. They didn't go in for the bootleg that time, and they were in the right place at the right time. They made the tackle. It still gained three yards, but uh, a lot of times we've seen that little bootleg deception one way, mo motion right, run left, go for six. We'll see if we see our first pass, third down. Second. Or excuse me, second down. And it's a sweep, Adams, he'll tuck it inside, puts his head down, picks up about three down to the 25-yard line. He'll bring up third down in about four, four and a half. So Chris far, Adams Hampton has done a carrier. decent job. Adams has broken two Steve runs for long gains, but since that, though, the defense of the Tigers have done a job. That's the type of play that is a designed run pass, I think. And we've seen Spriggs do it for years and Sampson before that. They roll it that way, and if he's got a receiver open, Fire downfield. If not, just tuck it under. You've got the blocking. That's the nice thing about the single wing. Any play, you can do anything out of it. It's all open option. You mentioned Chris Springs, graduate of New York High. Well, they miss him. All-American. Coming at you. Out in the flat, drop by Toller. It would have been a first down. He had about eight yards ahead of him to pick up some first down yards. It'll bring up a fourth. Once again, if you're a defensive lineman for Hampton Sydney, how did you know what that play was? Because he just started rolling the sweep, and the next thing he pulled up and fired that ball very quickly. But it is going to be a fourth down for Denison, a decision time for Coach Piper. Coming in, Jim Bianchi, a kicker who is a sophomore, and I believe they're going to line up about a 43-yard field goal attempt. This is going to take some time to get set. So they're going to have to watch the uh, delay of game penalty, but uh, the, the ball is going to be placed at the 32, so it'll be a 42-yard attempt angle to the left. We'll see if Bianchi can get there. Good snap, good hold. It's up. Long enough. He's got it. The big red on the board. 8.23 left to go. First quarter. Bianchi gets him on the board. They still trail it, though, to the Tigers. 7-3. to three. So both teams have scored in their first possession of the season. That's always a nice thing to put in the press releases. And we'll be back with Denison's kickoff after you watch this Cable 5 timeout. Bianchi tees it up after that 42-yard field goal to get the big red back at it, 7-3. Barber, 44, one deep man, and wide receiver number 80, Whit Wixley, is the second deep man. Sun comes out at Denison University. It'll be Barber. 20-yard line. Cuts it up, gets an opening, outruns the man at the 40. To the 45, it's driven down right there. So the second return, good yardage for the Tigers. Jack Barber, the ball carrier. Barber gets an excellent Dan field Francis. position. Francis, the man on the first stop for the team in red. Eight ten left to go, first quarter from Denison. The home team trails it, 7-3, from the power eye. Kelly 
straight ahead, bowls his way to the 50. They'll mark him the knee touch at the 49, but he picks up about three yards. We'll David call it Kelly second Kelly down and seven. As Kelly, their All-American last year, gained over 1,000 yards. Lacey in on the stop. Well, I've got a chance for time. It might be interesting to know for people to, to keep an eye in future weeks on the George Michael Sports Machine show seen on NBC uh, by HIZ, our Zanesville affiliate. And uh, in the near future, they are in attendance today taping this ball game for a feature on Denison's single wing. Pass is intercepted and dropped. Double coverage that time as they were going over the middle. Dan Laramore's pass intended for John Waite. Broken up by Chris Lacey. Looking for Waite, tight end number 84. Good defense that time, third down and seven. Hampton Sydney's attempted three passes. They all have been on the money, but only one has been completed so far, and that set up their touchdown run. And it was over the middle, about a 27-yard completion. It set up the seven-yard run, fumble in the end zone. The tight end recovered it, and that's how they scored. Larimore, good protection. He's going to run it. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all they have to boot it away. So the defense held after giving up the Dan starting the touchdown. Carrier, and coming in to make a big Dan defensive Holland. play, Dan Holland and once again Reynolds. as he was trying to get the rush, but pulled back when he saw the quarterback start to run. He also had some help as the Denison defensive line really collapsed well once the ball to run was uh, realized. It's going back once again. The Big Red have three men on punt coverage. Stapleton deep. It'll go out of bounds. We'll see where they mark it. Not a very good kick at all. They'll say it went out. She keeps walking. Mark Millum punts out of bounds. Inside the 30. They'll call it the 28. So Denison trails 7-3. to three. We'll get their hands on the ball. We're still in the first quarter. we got seven minutes left. you got to like the way the defense made some adjustments. They shut down the run very quickly. Forced Hampton Sydney to go to the air unless Hampton Sydney decided to try a few passes. And uh, being unsuccessful, they punted the ball away to Denison. And now the Big Red at the 28-yard line have some decent field position at least to get started with. They're not backed up against their goal line. Drive starts at the... 28. Adams hit and buried. First man on the stop, Graziano, Chris number Adams. eight again. And we've called stop his number two Tommy or three Graziano. times. He's a he's a sophomore, 5'10", 170. But he's playing not like a sophomore. He's playing very experienced, very mature ball player, and he seems to be reading the play well. Uh, you got to wonder if the defense might have somebody keen on a particular player with the single wing run by Dennison just to. Uh, to say, you know, keep your eye. If you see this guy coming your way, you pick him up, forget the other coverage. But still, when you look at Graziano coming in from his uh, defensive end or an outside linebacker position, he's doing quite a job. Adam. Ducks one man, bobbles the ball. Let's see if he was down first. Yeah, they'll call his knee, hit the ground first. It'll bring up third down and long. Chris Adams, the ball Again, carrier. They run that power sweep. Up by Jack good Barber. Pursuit, Jack Barber, the defensive back, number 44, the first guy to stop him, the junior. Linebackers, you look at Chenault, number 57, and Bell, 89, juniors and seniors in that 5-2 defense. The two keys on defense are those linebackers. Talking to Coach Bush this morning, he said we got to stay at home against this single wing. We looked at it on a film, weren't sure what was happening. Take the Marsh, and they come it inside to Toller. He'll have the first down over the 40. Out to the 41, and that's what the single wing's all about. Oh, no problem. You saw the sweep how many times? Half a dozen now in the ball game, and all of a sudden, player, you, you think of the names of the people that have used the single wing back there. You know, Jimmy Thorpe and all those fine early college ball players, and uh, then you look at the, the single dimensional ball players of today when you talk about your uh, football players. Once again, we've got uh, Adams running on the near side and picking up about Chris five Adams. yards before Umberger, Chip, Chip Umberger, a senior defensive back, makes a tackle for a defensive back to flow with a play that well. He's got some quickness. Good pursuit to the ball, this Tiger team. Hampton Sydney, like we said, they're in Virginia. They came here on Thursday. Their enrollment, 890, like Ed said, all males, founded in 1776. Bet homecoming's no fun. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> Second down and six. Adams just runs it outside, picks up a yard to the 46-yard line. Stopped by Chip Pryor. Pryor, first man to stop him. Number 92, the junior defensive right tackle, six foot 205. 
It just picked up a score of local interest, and that was Wittenberg over Hope College, seven to nothing in the first quarter. And uh, I tell you, the SID and the department up here at Denison are really keeping us uh, up to date with everything. The advocate reporter comes in, tells us Ohio State's winning 17 to nothing in the first quarter. My dad won't speak to me again tonight, but uh, well, Ed's dad's a graduate from the Mountaineer School up in West Virginia. Gonna pass it. This time it's complete. First down. He gets more. Toller to the 45. Same pass, opening drive that Toller dropped. They come right back with it to the opposite end of the field. Picks it up. First down. 4:22 left. Big red on the move. But the point I was about to bring up, if you've watched, you know, it looks complacent now. We've seen the same play on the ground two or three times. Everything looks so nonchalant. You know, the little delay by Adams, the sweep by Adams. It was about time you could just feel the way the dense, the Dennis and uh, runs were getting stopped, that maybe the defense was pinching for the run, and we had the open lane for the pass. Going to put it up again, the same play. Oh, if it would have been there, he had some running room at the 40. The pass falls incomplete. Stops the clock at 357. But he has single coverage out on the flat. Graziola was coming over, but he would have been late. Oh, Graziano was coming over, but like I said, he was very late. It's a, a nice play. It looks like he got two men over on the near side. The toller was open. The, the field is slick because we had uh, rain yesterday, and it was very hazy and foggy up until game time, and everything is damp and dreary and muggy and you, you name it, typical late summer type of conditions. But uh, the pass was there. Toller made a nice effort diving for it. It was not thrown for a completion. Second and ten. Straight run here. Hits head and down, didn't get it to 45. Chris Adams. Graziano, again, number eight. Tommy Graziano. He's got to be one tired man. Oh, he had some help that time, though. He didn't do it all by himself. But number 79 for Hampton Sydney. Steve Carpenter seven. also did Hope play. College, zero. Steve Carpenter, number 79, defensive end. He's switching back and forth with James Clayton, number 96. They play that 5-2. Third down. Nine. I see a lot of mouth guards hanging out right now as the Hampton Sydney defense trying to catch their breath between plays. It is humid. Over the middle, intercepted, no, and dropped. Threw it right in the arms of the Tiger defense. Intended for Donna Stoller. Chris Bell, the linebacker, broke it up. So it'll be a punting situation. Fourth and nine. On. Jason Nettleman, number 65, will be punting for the Big Red. And no ring kick. Good. He touches at the nine. He'll pick it up. He's going to get hemmed in and dropped right there short of the 10-yard line. Jack Barber, but he, it's, uh, it's like a suicide play. The ball's bouncing in front of you. You're inside the 20. If you let it roll, it's going to be downed inside the 5. You might as well you had a good hop, pick it up, and try to get a yard or two out of it. Keep it at least at the 10 or beyond the 10. We've got three minutes to go in the first quarter of play. We'll take this. We have five timeout. Steve Augustine. Hampton Sydney's over center, Leon. They go out of the eye formation. They give to Kelly. He bounces off one man and hit at the line of scrimmage and drop for no gain. Number 55 off the bottom of the pile. Holland, of course, the man in the middle Kelly, of the five man carrier. front of the nose guard. We've got less than three minutes to go in the first quarter of play, Leon, in the first ball game of the season. No penalty so far. And that's a very good start both ways. We've had a, an offensive series successful for both teams and an offensive series stopped by your defense. So I guess every coach is happy right now. Coach Bush is a little more happier. He leads it 7-3. Pin deep in their own territory. Going to keep it on the ground. Right straight ahead, short of the 15. Marking it right around the 14. Want to play safe here. Don't want to get a turnover. Yeah, but they sure had it lined up like they didn't want to play it too safe. But, uh, I like the way they set up with the three, three splits wide, pulling the defense away. Number one, you get a little less pressure in the middle, and you, with the fine runners you've got, they might have a little more opportunity for a hole. But uh, if something would come open, they had a little a fake on the handoff. Quarterback could have kept the ball, and 
you know, it, the opportunity was there. That's the, that's the type of setup they used to get their big first down on the touchdown drive before. Now they're set up third and long. We may see them go in the air if they need five. Naranjo, number seven, flanked out to the near side. He straight ahead. He'll lose a yard. He's gain tackle and drop. Wallace, the running back, Carter, on the stop. But it put Kevin Wallace in the ball game number one, and he got buried immediately. It's fourth down. Good defensive stand that time by the Big Red. Oh, George Carter did a very nice job as he just fought off his block, grabbed the ankles, and that's all she wrote. So it's a loss of uh, six inches or so. It will be a fourth down, and Hampton Sydney will be forced to punt. Mark Malam will be standing on the end zone strike. He gets it away, and then no rain kick. Dennison will let it drop. Hits on the 50. Stapleton just let it go as he backpedals. So field position has changed into the hands of the Big Red. They still trail at 7-3, to three, but they're next to the field position at their own 48-yard line. I think you can see why the Coach Shannon and uh, the Denison crew would be happy with the way the defense is playing right now and all the publicity that the defense has been generating about the key to Denison's team this year. Now, when you say generating publicity, of course, it's a single wing. When you've got NBC here covering the game and write-ups from almost every major newspaper in the country and magazine in the last year, ESPN's had coverage of them. Uh, that's a big attention getter, but that's only half the ball game. Your defense has got to do the job. Here comes the handoff to Mark Marston. To the 50, 45, pushes his head down and ran out of bounds. So they're swept the corner. They turn the defensive end in, and Marston runs out of bounds. by Chip Umberger. Six-yard run, Umberger, the linebacker, made the stop, but not before he got into Tiger territory at the 45-yard line. Coaching Coach Piper again, he says, we throw in the end around once or twice a game. That's a crowd pleaser. They get kind of bored with the single wing after a while. <laughs> Under a minute to go, first quarter. The Big Red, the single wing. Fake, handoff straight ahead, Toller gets an opening, kicks and fires down to the 35. Well, Mark, and he's got the first down. That's an excellent view of the single wing in action. If you had to play right in front of our camera, Rick Reinhardt doing a nice job up above. Rick Reinhardt's covered three football games in his life, and he's not exactly blessed with the ability to love football like we do. And be trying to cover the single wing, doing a nice job, Rick. You can see all the deception there. One guy moving, they fake the hand off to two people, then they hand it up the middle. Good shot, and there once again, that's, that's what it's all about. We told Rick just to cover the ball, but that's not always easy in the single wing. Fake again, same play, straight ahead, big hole. They just keep tearing up yardage. Kohler from Zanesville doing a job on offense right now, and they seem to think that they have an opening to Chanel and Graziano again on the stop. Nine seconds left in the quarter. That should end the first quarter of play here from Denison University. Brand new scoreboard. And that will do it. Good first quarter opening drive for both teams. Resulted in a point. At the end of your first quarter, your score, Hampton Sydney 7, the Big Red of Denison 3. And we'll be back with the second quarter of play from Deeds Field after you watch this Cable 5 timeout. As you can see across the way, this is college football, so you've got all of the students at the fraternity house over there. The only reason they uh, are staying there is they probably couldn't afford 50 cents admission. I mean, at Denison University, I'm, I am kidding, though, but uh, it's always a popular roost to be up at the frat house watching the game from the porch and... Uh, Enjoying the color and pageantry of college football. I guess there's really nothing like it, Leon. And you know, you've got 88, 90,000 people off the road, 30 miles watching Ohio State and West Virginia. It's just as much fun and just as the same atmosphere being here at Denison and covering the Big Red. As we've got Marston in motion, a fumble snap. It never made it back to Kohler. Going to pass. They've got a floater up there to uh, Strasbaugh down deep. Tipped around. Is it a touch? A completion? Yeah. Coming up with a great catch for Denison is number 86, Brian Strasbaugh, the local product from McGee Valley High School. As that ball was just thrown like a dying quail, Strasbaugh had the defense beat. He was standing back there at the goal line saying, here it is, come and get it to me. The ball didn't make it. He did a nice job getting back to it against two tough defenders. The ball was batted around on the ground, or in the air, I should say, and picked up by a Denison player before it hit the ground, first and goal. Defense made a poor judgment. You got to knock the ball down, and they did not do so. Dennis said, knocking on the door, can take the lead early second quarter. Marston dives in there. Is he in? 
No, they'll call him short of the goal line and inside to one. We'll call it the half yard marker. It'll be second and goal. made by Rich Wilt. Wilt makes the tackle. So the big play, not what you call a Joe Namath type pass, but it got there. No, I, but maybe be careful because sometimes on the fumble, that's intentional in the single wing. Remember the old yeah. dead ball on the yeah. ground play? Dennison trying to take the lead. Touchdown. Adam from one yard out. So the big pass, Adams on a straight ahead power play, 13.59 second quarter. The Big Red take the lead for the first time this year. Bianchi, the sophomore, will try and tack on the 10th point. Adams will be the holder. High snap from center. <laughs> so they downed it there and now be this is a play. 9-7 your score. The Big Red takes the lead. Two plays into the second quarter. The Big Red of Denison leads it. Hampton Sydney player did this, the smart thing. You can't run back on an extra point attempt. They're just going to touch the ball down. No big deal. Slid past it, put his hand on it. The official wasn't going to blow the whistle. Denison almost picked the ball back up. But nevertheless, nice play by Sydney reacting to the loose ball situation. The point after is no good. You look at the uh, Denison University in the North Coast Athletic Conference and uh, Hampton Sydney in the uh, Old Dominion Conference. Kind of reminds me of, like the Ivy League of small schools. When you look where in both of these conferences, you're talking about academics first and then athletics. Well, I guess kind of with the no scholarship situation, maybe all of Division III is that way. But still, you're talking about fine schools that have great athletic tradition, but you're talking about number one, the academic aspect of the colleges first. And that's, that's great to see. And you look at the grid records for Denison as they got into the NCAC out of the Ohio Athletic Conference. And uh, they've won it two times out of three attempts. And they were 6-0 last year, finishing first place. Case Western Reserve, who's always strong. They've, they're the only other team to win the uh, NCAC title. 7-1-1 mark overall, 5-1. The one lost to Denison, and they finished in second place. And needless to say, everybody's looking for that matchup to be the possible championship matchup for this conference. Yankees, I don't think so. You've got Dennison. too many other schools that are really coming on. Allegheny College in particular has been building things up. Kenyon's improved. And you, know, you go down the list of who's in the colleges. The ball has fallen off the tee. Worcester, Oberlin, Ohio Wesleyan. And uh, it's a small conference. You're talking uh, five, six, eight schools. But uh, still, they're schools that are really putting together some football tradition, and uh, I think they did fairly well in their first non-league games, those that played last week. The Yankee gets it high and deep. They'll come down to Wasky. Trying to turn a corner, cannot do so. He's buried at the 20. Let's get the man's number who hit him, 54. John Aerosmith, linebacker. Wasky, no place to go. Aerosmith, the big linebacker, come down and nailed him. Pretty good musician, too. <laughs> okay. Can you have a fan? <laughs> 1352 before half. 9-7. Dennison leads it. They mixed the extra point just a couple seconds ago. Quickly out of the huddle is the Tigers. They trail it. Option. Oh, dragged down from behind is Wallace. He turned a corner, picked up some good yardage, but boy, he got dragged down by one arm. So Wallace has entered the backfield. Jones and Montgomery. On the tackle, defensive back, both of them. From the 26 yard line. Second down and three. After a pickup of seven, Wallace again gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe. Wallace, a senior from Richmond, uh, Virginia, Mills High School. A lot of the majority of the players by far for the Hampton Sydney team, you look at the roster, are from the Virginia, especially the Richmond, Virginia area, which is an absolutely beautiful part of our country. But, uh, you know, I'd say probably 70 to 85 percent of their team is from the Virginia area. So I see a lot of Virginia beats there. They got a couple of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, Dallas, Texas routines, and uh, North Palm Beach. Florida. One guy got lost for North Palm Beach, a freshman. He'll go home. <laughs> Third and five. Laramore going to go up top four. Four-man pass rush. 
He dumps it to Wallace. He breaks the tackle. Should be sure of the first down. Dan Laramore passes complete. So Laramore goes Wallace. underneath the Wallace. By Joe Reynolds. Reynolds, and Jones. number two, the first man to hit him, the outside linebacker. And Jones, the defensive back, came up and hit him. They're going to measure it. Officials you got to compliment Wallace, who's only 5'9", 170. Really a lightweight when you think about it, but second and third effort on the running plays, but also especially here on this pass completion. So he got hit, like you said, twice and fought him off, lunging, reaching, and doing everything he can to get the first down. And I think he's going to be just a little short, but we will wait for the chains to be stretched. And I need my binoculars, obviously, because I'm off, but it is a first down by half a length of a football. Because the chain went right down the middle of the ball, but uh, a really a nice effort that time by Wallace getting the first down, and you got to just effort, give him a compliment. Keep their drive alive. That's the third first down of the game. First one by passing, second one by passing, excuse me. They had the big bomb in the first series of plays to set up their touchdown. From the 31. Kelly straight ahead, two hands on the ball, gets over the 35, out to the 36. David Kelly, the ball carrier, tackle made Barnett, by number 73, the right tackle, 6'4", 210-pound senior. That's where they're going over, Mr. Burnett. 6'4", 210, I guess he's the lightweight of the line when you see 6'2", 240, 205, 230, 210. Not a bad-looking front line for Dennison at all. 230-pounder, that's that sophomore, T.C. Wilson, number 54. And TC trying to give the quarterback some protection. We got a flag, we got a holding, and we got an incomplete pass. Dan Laramore's pass intended for John so Laramore Lee. under some heavy rush. We got offensive play. holding like I saw it with a flag was thrown, and that missed. You have to be a genius to figure out it was holding. <laughs> I guess we'll have to give you credit for that then, Leon. But it uh, looks like Dennison's going uh, 52 on the defensive line, and then notice uh, one of the in linebackers decided to pinch a gap and and Blitz at the last moment, I believe uh, that was Lacey, and uh, coming from that position, and that really didn't help things at all, as they're going to talk it over, I believe the penalty will be marched off as it is going down, it would have been uh, second down and, uh, or make it third down and five, so you take them back 15, or I guess it's only a 10 yard march off, nevertheless it's going to be now second down and 20, yeah it is 15 yard mark off. Gotta get these high school and college rules straightened out. Well, the Denison's gonna want Laramore to throw it. The junior who did not attempt a pass last year definitely needs to do it now. Second down. We'll call it a country mile. They'll keep, keep it on the ground with the option. He'll tuck it in. He'll pick up five yards, but well short of what they need. It'll be third down. And we'll call it 10 yards to go. And Holland yeah, makes the tackle the number 55. Carrier. Holland the All-American last Ehrlich, year. George Carter. Carter also helped Holland. out number 78. Third down and 10. The Tigers trail in this ball game, nine to seven. 1052 left to go before half as the sun breaks through again. Good crowd on hand tonight. Larry is hit, dropped, and buried. Dan Laramore, the ball. So Laramore, no Stop place to go. Chris Gonzalez. Gonzalez in on a tackle, number 16, is a linebacker. Holland that time was the first to hit and just let him loose. And nice job by Gonzalez finishing up. As you can see Dan pounding the fist into the turf. He wanted the sack to himself. Nevertheless, the drive has stopped. A negative yardage uh, drive for the most part. It's going to be fourth and 13, and they're going to punt to Denison. Rex Stapleton back deep, but it'll be up to the short man. Fair catch is taken at the 46, and that's where the big red will take it. That was Wade number eight from Lakewood High School. Mark Milam's punt. Fair so again, catch by had good Wade. field position for the big red. Well, the kicking game has been an advantage to Denison, though they only have punted once, and that was the third Hampton Sydney punt, but they haven't been uh, uh, deep, you know, maybe averaging 25, 35 yards per kick. So Denison has been setting up shots between the 35 and the 50, which is a great place to start a drive from. Here they're at the 46-yard line of the Big Red, as you see them right in front of us lining up with the wing, and we're ready to go, Leon. Well, again, we'll call the singles number 28. Straight ahead, taller to the 50, inside the Tigers' territory to the 48. Pick up of about seven. First down yardage. The offensive line is starting to 
protrude a little more to get some good yardage. It is definitely warm and muggy on the field watching the, uh, Dan Holland on the sideline being ministered to. Actually, all the defense players by Dale Guggins, who's the head trainer and everything else when it comes to the medical end of the Denison Athletic Program. If he's using the moist towels and wraps and some ice and everything else. And he's got some assistance down there. Dale Dugan does an excellent job as Marston is hemmed in. Gets back to the line of scrimmage if that. That time Mark, the defense Marston. strung out the play decently. Never missed Stop a snap from center on a single wing, Leon. I looked up and I saw players going every direction. Had no idea where the ball was, but it was really something to watch. As once again, we're continuing to get updates on the scores. Second quarter score, Official Mount Union timeout. 6, Wooster 0. And uh, pretty close ball game up there, but we're seeing uh, Mount Union putting things together. Mount Union, the Yellow Jackets, I believe, or no, that's a high school, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> high school, college, which one we got this week? We'll have three or two more Denison University games, possibly a fourth if things work out. We'll bet college in two weeks. We'll be right here to give you the action. Adams carries it one-handed like Peyton and runs like him to the 35 and a first down. And we got a face mask. It's Adams, the ball carrier. Let's say I saw Stop the face mask, Jim but Bell. the official may have seen Humber. something else. We're going to wait a for the call. On the yeah, play. he saw something else a little further downfield, which would happen, too. And Denison was really an after-the-play clip. It came, uh, but the play was finishing up five yards downfield. First, first penalty, a big one, and it may negate a first down. That was a nice run. So they'll bring it back. It's Coach Piper. Probably will not like that call. Coach Piper, of course, has been here, the dean of Denison and Ohio coaches. His record of 175, 110, and 16 gives him a percentage of 608. And Ed, the last four or five years, yards. this ball okay. club has riddled off many, many victories. Yes, they have, as we may have some rain falling. Either that or the umbrellas are up for sun. You can't tell on one of these types of days. But the clipping penalty negates, negates once again, a nice play by Denison. It's going to be a third and five situation. A big play call for the offense and a a good opportunity for Hampton Sydney's defense to stand also. Two-point ball game, the big red in the lead. Adams over the middle, complete for the first down. Draws ball to the 40 to the 39. No flags, first down, big red. That time he stood in a pocket. Chris had good protection and hit the man over the middle. Ryan doesn't drop this. I say. He's got such a nice set of hands. Remember some of the high school games we saw. One game against Lakewood in particular. Man, he just... Uh, I think they were throwing a popcorn out of the stand between plays, and he was catching that, too. He just didn't miss anything. 8.43, clock rolling. He's a sophomore, 6'3", 225 pounds. Everybody in tight this time. 5'2", defense. Inside handoff to Marston. Mark dances his way short of the 35 to 36. Mark, Marston, the ball. So here. Mark, picking up some yardage. Tennyson, six first downs in the ball game so far. The first four they picked up by the run, the last two by the pass. Denison is also starting to control the clock. 8.07 to go before half, and their offense has been on the field now for a while. And that defense of Hampton Sydney's got to get a little tired. They're outweighed on defense. Second down and seven. Again, Marston wants to throw it, steps up. Hits his man against Strasbaugh to the 20. He fumbles, but it's recovered by the Big Red. Maybe. <laughs> it went through his legs, and now we got a pile. The pass was complete. The fumble and the scramble for the ball. Mark Marston passes complete to Brian Strasbaugh. Strasbaugh fumbled, but... Recovered by Todd Willis. Todd Willis, 75, the man on the spot. What a Licking County play. Marston, the Utica graduate. Strasbaugh, the Licking Valley product, fumbles the ball to Willis from Newark High School. Nice play. Do that in the All-Star game, right? Right. First and 10, the ball on the 16-yard line. Denison, 9-7, leading, trying to put more on the board before half. Just a power sweep. Chris gets a block, turns it in, and he's short of the 10-yard line. Good defensive play at that time. Keeps him in bounds at the 12. Stop Poor Jack Barber, Maddox. he got blocked nicely once, but that wasn't enough, so Toller ran him over the second time after he'd been taken out of the play. But uh, Sydney strung the, the, the uh, sweep out fairly well, and it's going to be a short gain, only, uh, well, I guess, four yards isn't exactly short, but that play looked like it was designed for more, and it's going to be second and six. Jack Barber, the junior defensive back, six foot, 170. Oh, 
Milligan. Straight ahead. Big yardage. Again, it's Adams. That offensive line starting to do a number. Willis, 75. Nettleman, 65. Williams, 72. Bodor, 56. McCourt, 61. The men up front in the trenches. We've got an injury for Hampton Sydney going off to the side, uh, really holding his left arm is uh, Leon's favorite name. You Italians stick together. Tommy Graziano. Tommy, a sophomore defensive back, has been on a lot of plays. You can see across the way now as our camera pans out. There is going to be a measurement for a first down. We'll let Rick let you follow Graziano here at the top left of the picture, and maybe you can see what they're going on with him, or we'll try to keep an eye on it. But the chains are now onto the field. It's stretched, and it's just that close. Missed it by that much. We'll wait for the measurements to uh, get the chain set back on the side once again as they'll uh, now, I believe, signal for the officials' timeout for the injured player. And uh, also, they're letting the, the team get a breather, get some water, get rested. It's, this is something that's good to see the officials do. As once again, we've mentioned it's muggy, it's warm. It's the first game of the season. Even though the teams are in good condition, there's this much action going on. It's good just to let them catch their breath and get rested so you don't get the leg cramps or an, a worse injury. 6.26 to go before halftime. Dennison threatening. We'll be back with the offense for the Big Red after this Cable 5 timeout. Dennison breaks the huddle. Third down. They just need inches to get the first down. They'll go straight ahead. Toller dies for the first down. And see where they mark it. It should be enough. He stacked up. They never did bring him down. Stop by Mike, Mike Chenault did a nice job as he grabbed Toller in midair and, like you said, never really uh, let him stop running, but they never let him get anywhere either. You only need a couple inches. That play will pick it up, and Dennison has a first down, a first and goal from the call it the five. This defense last year gave up 151 points. Rushing first downs, 150, uh, 153, passing 92 for the team statistics, so they got a good defense. But right now, Big Red knocking on the door, trying to put up that lead a little further. But they won't do it that play. A good play that time Mark, Mark, by Chris Bell, number 89, Bell. the linebacker. So, again, the two linebackers fill the gap. You're talking about a defense giving up 159 points over 10 ball games. That's just barely two touchdowns a game. That's very impressive, Leon. And they scored 278. They were 8-2. and two, Came in second place last year in their conference. So they hang right in there and do a job. Next week, this ball club will go have their home opener. Guilford College will come down into Virginia to play them. That will be their season opener. They lost to them last year. That's one of the two games they lost was the Guilford. So the coach is looking forward to that one. He told me before, we have to revenge that loss. The guy that made the big play for Hampton Sydney is still down. That's Chris Bell as uh, they are administering to him now uh, a leg, possibly. And looking across the way, are we talking about a shoulder, Leon, or a collarbone for uh, Graziano? Possibly. Is there... Uh, being uh, careful, try, looks like they're trying to pop the shoulder back into place. That's so painful. Such a such a, an injury that, that hurts for a long time. Well, we've got a chance. We'll run down uh, the high school scores of our uh, local interest last night. And uh, in the game we had on Cable 5 here, the Newark Wildcats home opener was not so uh, vic so exciting as the Wildcats were not victorious. They lost to Pickerington. Tough running by Pickerington. 24-6 was the final there. The Heath Bulldogs go to 2-0 and on the season. A team you're really going to have to look out for with Jimmy Norman as the runner. He'd really fit into a single wing well with all of his uh, speed and moves. 25-19, to Heath over Fairfield Union. Liberty Union and Granville in an exciting contest, but Liberty Union came out on top 20-14. to Hartley shuts out Johnstown. Lakewood over Bloom Carroll in a tough game, 10-7. Valley over Madison Plains, 30-7. to Utica, 32. Northridge, 7. And the rest of the teams either lost or don't play. Second down from the five-yard line. Straight ahead, power play. You sure the touchdown is Adams buried his head. And that offensive line is just starting to move the defensive line back at the snap of the ball. It'll bring third down. We'll mark it at the two-yard line. 
one high school game of interest tonight. Newark Catholic at 6 o'clock this evening playing at Lancaster against Fisher Catholic, a team we saw two weeks ago uh, against Heath. So the Green Wave with a tough win over Morgan. Morgan? Or, who was it they played? Morgan last week? You did the game, Leon. Well, I'll think about it. I'm not sure yet. We'll see if we can get this touchdown first. Adam has it. Dennison drives after a short punt from the 48-yard line. He traveled 48 yards for the touchdown at the 431 mark. Left before half, the score is 15 to 7. Dennison leads it. The Yankee in to try the extra point. Chris Adams will hold after the touchdown. Adams' second touchdown of the afternoon. Good snap this time. They fake it, going for two, looking for Marston. He's got it. Can he get in? No. Good defensive play by number 44, Jack Barber. Chris Adams passed Bev to Davis Mark also number 18 was there as they just did the job. I was thinking, too, all along because you missed the extra point earlier, and obviously they were thinking the same lines being the Hampton Sydney coaches. But a super defensive play once again by Bev Davis and by number 44, once again, Jack Barber. As we've seen them called Barber's name a number several times. But the point after is no good for the second time in a row. Chris Adams, as you've mentioned, four yards combined for two touchdowns, a one-yard dive and a three-yard run. But the uh, the big red leading by eight, 15 to seven. And we still have 431 to go here in the first half of play. It's Bianchi still waiting to get the football teed up as the official now brings it over and uh, will hand it uh, to the tee and let the young man tee it up. The Denison cheerleaders down below leading some cheers and a good showing of the student body. And we can't see it from our camera position, but the students are also sitting on the hillside as tradition. Uh, a little wet in the grass, but it's a great view of a football game, and it doesn't cost anything. That's the best part about it. Jim Bianchi kicking off. Bianchi will kick it off at the 35. Dennison now leads it 15 to 7. 4:31 to go before half. A good play ball game. Penalty flags, just a couple, one each. Waski runs up on it. Getting a wedge at the 35. Good cut to the outside. Shakes the tackler to the 40. And ran down from behind by Chasey, number four. Another Lincoln Steve County the ball carrier. player. Kowalski gave somebody a leg and took it to the outside. Oh, he caught that. Like you said, he came up on the ball at the 10-yard line. Had a nice head of steam going. But really did a nice job cutting it to the outside, especially with the wet turf the way it is. As we've seen several places where the field's been overturned already from... Uh, people trying to get footholds, but he did a nice job and made, got the ball out to the 39-yard line. Excellent starting position for Hampton Sydney as they've been hemmed inside their uh, 20 the last couple possessions. Waski taking over on a kickoff return. Last year, he only ran one back all season for 20 yards. Barber, 15 times last year for 293 yards. They go from the I formation. They'll keep it on the ground straight ahead. Good opening. To the 45, to the 48. Running with the ball once again for Hampton Chris City. Barth, the ball as Chris Bars, and he had a uh, long touchdown, or long Stapleton. pass reception earlier in the game. And we've got a Denison player who is down. And I'm looking to see where 55, okay, Holland's okay, but uh, this would appear to be one of their linemen, Leon. It was, I think he just got squeezed in there. So the last few minutes we've had some injuries. Of course, Graziano is out, the fatigue factor takes in. Trying to catch your breath. It's a hot, muggy day here at Denison, Ohio. It's real muggy in here when I spill my Coke as we get ready to start the ball game in the telecast today all over the countertop. That didn't help any either, but uh, it is a lineman going in for Denison on the uh, defense. will be replacing number 67, Eric Perwitz. And uh, once again, you see everybody huddled over the injured player. Coach Piper, I believe, is on the field also to probably take a look and see what the number is more than anything else. No, that's not true. He's obviously checking to see how his injured player is. But we've got a, a lengthy timeout on the field. 4-12 to go here in the first half of play. We won't be bringing you a band show because there is none from Denison unless the fraternity cranks up the stereo again. But uh, <laughs> nevertheless, well, we've got a break with the injury. We'll take this, Cable 5, timeout.
Rex Stapleton, the gentleman that was shaken up, he came off on his own power. We looked down below and the trainer, Guggen, gave him a lot of cold compact on his head. He'll be all right. He's got his belt around. He'll be back in there. I think he's in Ohio Stadium right now. Larimore, quick look and it's complete and hit and drop. Short of the 45, but a good Jack pass Larimore that time. Pass is complete to Steve Waskey. Waskey, the sophomore, Tackle makes the reception. Wait, number eight. Makes the tackle the fourth, fourth down in this half at the 349 mark. 15 to 7, the Big Red leads it. We've got Hampton Sydney being three of five passing in the game, and that's the three completions have been three first downs. They lost the quarterback last year, fourth drop. He was 96 out of 177 for a 54% completion, and he's going to go for the Dows. Now he's going to tuck it in and run. He throws it in and out, and it's pretty close to the line of scrimmage. I do not see a flag. Dan he was back. throwing that pass intended for intended Al for Aranjo. Al and really a nice job with the uh, a nice job with uh, making up a play as he went along. It's like you said, he was rolling back to, to fire along and the receiver was covered and then he had, was going to run with it and that was covered and he came up with the third man. Five minutes to go in the first half. We've got Hiram upsetting Case Western Reserve right now, 10 to 7. And uh, everybody up here is smiling about that because, uh, needless to say, Case Western's the other team. They've got a new coach this year and uh, some new players, but uh, they're the team that's supposed to give Denison the big battle in the NCAC. And we'll have that game here on Cable 5 earlier this year. But that game will be right here at Denison. And you can see 55 as Kelly goes nowhere. Dan Holland, the man in the middle, just beat the offensive player and just buried to Kelly. Nice defensive play with enough. What can you say is it's one-on-one -on -one play and a very sure tackle. So it's going to bring up a third and ten as the skies are darkening. Either the fog's rolling in or the rain's coming. Three minutes to go in the half. They need a first down. They trail it 15 to 7. Laramore. Three-man pass pattern over the middle. He's got his man. It's complete for the first down to the 25-yard line. Naranjo. And Laramore passes to bleed to Al Naranjo. They're probably going to be able to tack some more yards on that. And we've got a flag in the backfield, a personal foul. Denison, a late hit. The uh, Denison player and the quarterback the for Hampton Sino both look at the official and were pointing like each other, saying, hey, you're calling on him, right? But it was obviously which way this penalty was going. I'm really impressed with the uh, with the passing that we've seen from Hampton Sydney. It's your quarterback. has been very patient in the pocket. He was under some pressure. Drilled a strike to his receiver who was right right in the middle of the defense. And perfect play call. It goes to the 25. Now they're going to tack on half the distance for the penalty. Hampton Sydney is setting up shop deep in Denison territory at the 11, first and 10. Naranjo did not complete catch a completion at all last year. But he tacked down a good one over the middle that time. Personal foul, like Ed said. He's going to put the ball at the 10. No, I can't right. How about 12? There we go. First and 10 from the 12. 2.38 to go in the half. Barth can't get away. The defense comes to the forefront that time, led by Jones, number seven. Barth stopped Also George making the Carter. tackle is George Carter, number 78 for the big red. 6'1", 245-pound junior. You know, the defense, we've been saying, is the, the stronger part of the Denison team this year, and you see six seniors out there, but you also see a number of sophomores, uh, four soft, three, four sophomores in the starting lineup. A good balance between youth and experience. Second down and nine. The Tigers trying to capitalize on a big penalty. They run the option. Barth hit, drop, Jones number seven again from his defensive back. That time no one got to Jones and he forced the play and made the tackle. Trying to run a little bit to the short side of the field. Usually you see the option coming to the wide side of the field. So there isn't much room to roll it, and when the defense stays at home, good luck. But uh, it's down to about the 10-yard line, so they still have a long way to go, third and almost eight yards. And there isn't that much room to try to get pass routes here, so it's going to be a big call, and they're going to have to think about it and actually Time talk out. about it a little bit. As Hampton Sydney Tigers have called a timeout, a minute 28 to go in the first half. you got to wonder, we've seen their punting game has not been uh, what you would call impressive for great distance so we don't know what kind of an extra point kicking game they were they obviously made one but uh, a for a field goal to quarter, go this ball club this is the quarter that they score last seven. year 
the Tigers scored 102 points in the second quarter. And if I look over the quarter, team stats a, a little more, this offense has also fumbled, though, 22 times last year and lost 14, and now is not the time to cough one of those up as they came away with that fine 8-2 and two record last year. 22 fumbles, lost 14. The opponents fumbled 21 times, so they forced 21 fumbles, but they only recovered 15 of those fumbles. That's still, that's not a bad number when you consider 10 games. You're averaging two a game or a little bit more than that, but once again, that turnovers is probably where they picked up one or two of those losses they had last year as the uh, water people are coming off for Denison, trainers, whatever you want to call them, one from each sex. Remember the days where you never would see a woman on the sidelines of a football game, whether it be covering the game for the press or working as a manager or a trainer or, or who knows what else. But uh, times are changing for the better. Look for this ball club to go over a left tackle, Rip West, number 76. He's 6'2", 240, only a freshman. We'll see if they go his way. They keep it on the ground. They need to get in with 128 to go in a half. They're going to put it up to Laramore. Under some heat, throws a screen pass to Wallace. He cuts it back up, short at the five-yard line. But not a, not a bad call, though, really. Oh, it's an excellent call. They had the deception. Everything was looks like play action to the yeah, right Lerner side of the field. Turn back. Wallace came Wallace. back and held South his hand up so you could see him in the Jones, wave of all the George blocker. Carter, and uh, he got the catch, but there wasn't enough room to roll for the first down. He's going to be short by three yards, and we will apparently see a field goal attempt, and Wallace will be doing the kicking. Kevin Wallace. No, okay, I see the one. I didn't see the two. I'm sorry, Leon. Honduras will do the kicking, number 12. So Coach Bush trying to put three points on the board. And come away with something. Bill Comer will set it down for a 23-yarder. Good hole. It's up. He's got it. So a good drive with the aid of the big red uh, defensive penalty. Stops the clock with 34 seconds to go before half. The guests, the Tigers, have 10 points, but they still trail it 15 to 10 as Denison still leads here late in the first half. Leon, that was not an easy kick for Hans Rulis to do at all because he was kind of a soccer style from left to right, and he had to bring the ball back around to the left, so he really had to hook it. But put it right down the center. It was a nice kick, and once again, as you point out, it's a five-point big red lead, 15 to 10. And Denison will be lining up to receive the kickoff. I wonder if they're, yes, they have. They're, I think, moving their up man about 10 yards closer to uh, the field of play than they were before. In other words, Marston, who is the deep man, is standing at the 10 instead of at the goal line. Mark Marston, of course, from Utica. When he was a freshman, he returned a kickoff 95 yards for a touchdown. Then he turned around as a sophomore, and he went 85 yards for a touchdown. So Coach Piper has Mark deep. And remember, he holds all the receiving records at Utica High School, too. And that wasn't with uh, Adam the league championship Algier ball clubs, either. Coach, Rob Post is quarterback for... Uh, a couple of those years, and uh, I forget who the other ones were. But, uh, okay, Denison now is going with a different lineup. They're only going to keep two men back. They're playing for a short kick. He boots it. He angles it to the near sideline. And it comes out in the middle. Mark has it at the 25. Sets himself, goes straight ahead. Good cut back. He'll get over to 35, down to about the 36, with 26 seconds to go before half. So the big red. Has decent field position, but not a lot of time Mark on the Marston, clock. The ball carrier. Probably Tackle see the, made by Keith Wadsworth. See the single wing just run the, the clock out. It's once again, you got one play, maybe two. Uh, Sampson Sydney, I believe, used two timeouts already. And uh, we'll have to uh, see what they do. The clock will have to uh, start after a snap from center, so we will run at least one play. From the single wing, Dennison looking at that 5-2 defense of the Tigers. Straight ahead, just to kill the clock. Donna Toller. Toller picks up maybe a yard, goes back to the line of scrimmage. They'll just let it run out. As we have a couple of halftime scores, Wooster and Mount Union. Wooster leads it 10-6. Wittenberg has come back 24-3 over Hope College. Adrian College 14, Ohio Northern nothing at half. And Ballin Wallace leads John Carroll at the half 3 to zip. First quarter, Lockhaven 7, Muskegon up the road 0. As you see, that's the end of our first half. Good ball game for the, for the Big Red so far. They lead it at the half edge, 15 to 10. We've seen a little of everything so far. Oh, we most certainly have. We've seen a, a half of play that's had five scores put in the, in the book or on the board, whichever way you want to look at it. 
We've seen outstanding defense. We've had uh, four punts in the game. Very few turnovers to be exact zero. Uh, we've had just a fumble, one fumble. That's turned out to be a razzle-dazzle type of play. Some long passing, some basic single wing, and a lot of fun as Brian Strasbaugh made a, a heck of a catch a, a while ago. One of those, uh, he shouldn't have fumbled it in the first place type deals, but it never let it turned out for the best. And at the half, Denison leads 15 to 10. Unofficially, Leon, looking at the stats that I've got, I've got Hampton Sydney with five first downs, four from the pass, one from the run. Denison, on the other hand, eight first downs, four running, the first four were running, the last four, or correction, that would be five running, three passing. Uh, passing attempts, Hampton Sydney 4 of 7, Denison 4 of 7 also. Uh, one fumble by Denison, they didn't lose it. One penalty by Hampton Sydney for 15 yards, Denison two penalties, 25 yards. Three punts by Hampton Sydney, one punt by the Big Red. But we'll get the official statistics at the end of the at the end of halftime, and we'll bring them back to you as well as running down the scoring and some keys from the first half and some things to watch for in the second half of play. But first, we'll take this cable five timeout. What would you recap? Back at halftime, 15 to 10 year score, the home team, the Denison Big Red leads it in a good played first half. As Ed gets some official statistics, we look at the first downs, nine to five, Denison leads it. Rushing yardage, 29 carries for the Big Red for 113 Adam yards. Hampton Sydney, 19 Hampton carries for 56. Sydney. Passing yardage, 65 for the Big Red. The Tigers come in with 71 as we start the second half. We'll go over more of the statistics in a moment. Denison will receive it's a high, short one. Marston runs up on it at the 25. Gets the wedge, goes through it to the 43-yard line, and that's what Denison will start out the second half. Coming Mark, in to make the Mark tackle was number carrier. 96 for Hampton tackle Sydney. That's Clayton James, Clayton. Clayton James, or actually James Clayton, depending on which way you want to do it. I guess the names are reversed in the program. Some of them are, some of them aren't. So you call that one either way. Either it's Clayton James or James Clayton making the tackle. I'm going to call it Clayton James. So Denison, good field position at the 42. So the last time they had their uh, ball for a full offensive set, started, the drive started at the 42, and it went 4 6. Glad you're with us. Ed Jobes, I'm Leon Malanzi. We hope you enjoy the telecast. It'll be Adams on the sweep. He's got blockers. Toller throws a block. He cuts outside of it. He bulldog at the 50 yard line, midfield, first down. I'm sorry, first carry of the second half. He picks up about eight. Umberger in on a stop. And the linebackers on that 5 2, Ed, they won a lot of stops in that first half. Bell and Chenault, and now Umberger comes up from his defensive back. Okay, we'll have a slight delay as the Denison player needs an equipment adjustment. Guggen's on the field very quickly to uh, make the adjustment individually. We'll run down the rushing for Denison Adams. 16 attempts for 75 yards, two TDs. His longest was an 18-yard carry. Mark Morrison, six carries for 10 yards. Dennis Toller, seven carries for 28 yards. Passing Adams, two of five. Toller, one of one. Total there of 49 yards. Receiving Strasbaugh, Strasbaugh three for 57 yards. Toller, one for eight yards. And once again, one 37-yard punt by Needleman for Denison. We'll run down Hampton Sydney statistics the next chance we get. Hampton Sydney digs in on defense. They trail it 15 to 10, opening minute, third quarter. And he's going to be hit and dropped in a backfield. That time, Wilt, number 56, Mark the ball carrier. does the job. Rich Wilt, 6'2, 185 pound senior, really blew through there. First time we've had a chance to call his name. And he came up with a big, about a three or four yard hit for a loss. So Denison faced now with a third and seven, maybe a yeah, third and seven situation for Hampton Sydney. Kelly. Seven attempts and only 23 yards. The first run was his longest run. That was eight yards. Bart, six for 24 yards. and nine yard run was his longest. And Wallace, three attempts for six yards. Larry Moore, five of eight passing for 71 yards. And Wilsey Adams rolling to the near side, wanting to pass, firing the ball. Marston gets the completion. Does he hold on to it? Well, wait, yes, he does with a nice one-hand hold and gets the first down in Hampton Sydney, Sydney Territory at the 42-yard line inside the 42, call it the 41, but uh, once again, single wing, roll, design, run, option pass, they do it. It's good to see number eight, Tommy Graziano, in the ball game at defensive halfback. He was shaken up midway through the second quarter, and he's back, and he made it a lot of tackles in that first quarter. Tommy from Richmond, Virginia. 
Long count. Delay straight ahead is your move. He'll get to the about to the 41 yard line and the defense comes to the forefront led by number 56 again, Rich Wilk. So he's been on two tackles in a row. And of course, he's from West Palm Beach, Florida. 6'2", 185 pound senior. Leon, I wanted to point out, I thought a key for the second half would be to look to see for two people from Hampton, Sydney who went out injured in the first half of play. You've already mentioned the one is back being Graziano. The other one who was uh, number 89, that was Chris Bell. He is also back in the uh, defensive line. So all the injured players for Hampton City are back on the field as we see running up the middle, running up the gut again with a little delayed draw is Dennis Toller, uh, or call it Donis Toller, sorry about that. But uh, once again, Donis, who does that well, you just stand there, hold the ball for a second, it's a little delay on the, on the wing, and he gets out to the 35-yard line. Once again, Dennis in space with the third, this time it's third and three. Umberger made the tackle. He led the, He was second in the team tackles last year with 65. This year he's a co-captain. Nine career interceptions from the linebacker spot, or excuse me, from the defensive back spot. So he's a key man for the Tigers on defense. His third down, we'll call it three. Wide open, overshoots his man at the 30. It would have been a first down. He just Chris threw it high as Chris. Intended for Brian Strassball. Strassball was your tenor receiver. It'll make it fourth and down, and let's see what the head coach of the Big Red decides to do. Go for the punt as Nettleman will try his second punt in the game and force Hampton Sydney back deep. But once again, the play, as you can see, everything was fake, option, left, you name it. Then they did the old spin 360, fired back to the right side. He had a little time to throw the ball, hurried it, and it was a high throw. As you see, the short kick. And it's going to be inside the five, set in the end zone for a touchback. Nice try, just the ball bounced the wrong way. Jason so, Nettleman's punt will go out of bounds. Well, actually, will go out into the end zone, so it's a touchback. Hampton Sydney will get their first possession from 20. Good job on their defense, stopping Dennison's drive. Their pass receivers, Hampton Sydney's in the first half. Wallace, two completions for nine yards. Bars caught one for 38 yards. And Narajo caught one for 20 yards. Malam on the punting, three attempts, 28.3 yard average. His longest one was 34 yards. That gives, that has given Dennison good field position. Big red on defense, stuffed the first play. It went straight ahead for very little gain. They bring up second down Chris and long. Bark the ball carrier. Bark the ball carrier. Correction, David Kelly, the ball carrier. Excuse me, Kelly had 23 yards in the first half Chris on seven Lee. carries. Lacey, 51, one of your inside backers, make the stop for the big red on the 5-2 defense. We'll set that defense again if we look for any changes. They'll keep it on the ground, the bar. Gets a block from Kelly, cuts it to the outside, gets the first down, runs Wade right over, and Wade finally brings him down just over the 35 at the 37. Two Good plays, the first carrier. down. Stopped by Tim Montgomery. His ball club's only trailed Rex by... Stapleton. We got five, 15 to 10 your score. Early third quarter, 11 to 32 to go in the quarter. Dennison returns 15 starters from last year's squad. And Ed and I were talking about how they really had a tremendous record since 1984. We look in the stat sheet, and the Big Red has compiled a 27 and three record since 1984. They keep it on the ground with the option. He'll cut it up. He'll get a hit, but he'll get to the 40 yard line and pick up of a couple. So Coach Bush keeping it simple right now, trying to get the lead here early third quarter. This game is anybody's ball game, as you pointed out several Dan times. Larimore, it seems to me carrier. that Hampton Sydney's picked up the tempo Michael a little bit. A little quicker uh, between Dan plays Holland. and getting to the line, a quicker Lacey. count. And they just also seem to be maybe a little more fired up than they were in the first half. As uh, I don't know, the intensity level to me feels just a little higher than it was in the first half of play. As they have the ball, with, like you mentioned, second and eight from their 40. Sun trying to pop through here in the third quarter. He fakes the dive. He's under pressure. Hampton hits him. He gets it away. He dropped it. And incomplete. Good call by the official. He was right there. No question about it. It was close. Laramore got it off. Well, I tell you, Holland really hit him. Right in. Put the helmet between the numbers and stuck him with the one step. That was even legal in the NFL as it was a solid hit and clean this time. And it is going to be now a third down and eight situation for Hampton Sydney. But you can see they're really trying to open things up on the offense, it looks like. Wait, the tight end was your man who dropped the ball. He tried to make a good scoop, I should say. Third down and seven, early third quarter. We got whistles. Stop at your play. 
early indication would be it's going to be backing uh, up the Tigers, the procedure call. And that is correct. We compliment the Denison defense for being very good and astute in picking up the officials. Uh, job for them. What do we need? The men in stripes and we let the players make the calls themselves. Nevertheless, so now instead of being a third and eight, you're going back to a third Hampton and 13. Penalized five yards. Full procedure. It's going to be a beautiful day as the uh, co-eds have accumulated on the hillside and to our left, sitting there uh, watching the action. Cheerleaders down below with their white and uh, red, supporting the big red. Good number of alumni and local supporters and rooters cheering the big red on right now, Leon. They need 13 on third down. Good protection. Stands up nicely and throws it in the turf. Incomplete. It would have been short of a first down by about eight yeah, yards. So the two defenses have come out in the third quarter and shut down the offense as everybody had one chance and couldn't go anywhere. 15 to 10 year score. The big red lead and they're at home. Well, once again, going on a 30-yard average on the kick, Denison should at least catch this ball around the 30-yard line, and they've got three men standing around the 30. Low snap from center. The kick is away. It's going to be a high hang. Fair catch will be called and taken at the 36-yard line for Denison, making the catch for the Big Red, Tim Montgomery. Matusevich hung it up high, and Montgomery came under it. He also plays defensive back. So the Big Red has the ball with 10.23 left to go third quarter. New punter. See what Coach Piper has his squad do here early third quarter. Second possession of the quarter for the Big Red out of the single wing. Man in motion, Marston. They fake it to him, they give it to Toller. He cuts it up, puts his head down, and picks up seven. The offensive line opened up a hole, and he got through it nicely. Oh, nice job by Donis once again. We saw him do that against Newark a few times, Donis if you were to call back. As Donis just, cut, he just kept going outside, kept going outside. He's got a, a player down on the field holding that left shoulder. And uh, I don't think it's Graziano. Who, I see him up and about. Looks like another player for Hampton Sydney with a shoulder injury. Maybe Umbarger as he was caught in the middle of the pile. We can't see the numbers, so we won't speculate. But uh, the injured player is down. And while we've got a chance, Leon, we'll take a look at our... Uh, Cable 5 coverage of local sports coming up this week, and uh, we'll have an opportunity to watch the Newark Wildcats once again on Friday evening as they'll be hosting the Toledo Whitmer team, a ball club that uh, advanced to the state semifinals last year in Division 1, and they will be coming into town, and the Panthers will be battling Newark coach Tim Sims uh, Wildcats to try to get uh, that first victory for the year. And on Saturday, the ball game. It may not be for a league championship, but it's for state pride and it is also between two state champions and that will be the Newark Catholic Green Wave our Ohio State Division 5 champion battling West Virginia's Sistersville High School Ball Club who are state champions from uh, one of the small school division I don't know if that's a 3A 4A or the situation in that state but uh, nevertheless we've got uh, a matchup made in heaven maybe when you're talking about Newark Catholic I don't know but uh, this is a ball game both teams have been pointing for for a long time. And the Green Wave are 1-0 with a ball game to play tonight before they can think about Sisterville trying to uh, become, I believe, what now, three-time defending state champions and four times as they're on another quest for victory, uh, losing one ball game in the last two or three years. Uh, they have just been incredible. As the injured player is up for Hampton, Sydney. It is number 58 for the Tigers. That is Jim Bell. And Bell is a freshman, 230-pound left tackle at 6'1". He's got that right arm crooked underneath. Once again, it's a collarbone shoulder type of injury. They're taking him to the sidelines, and we'll get the jersey off and take a look at him and hopefully get him back in the lineup, or if not for today, at least get him ready for action next week because they'll have the Tigers home opener coming up. Second down, we're going to call a long three. Denison, straight ahead of power football. Chris over the 45 to the 46. We'll see where they mark it. It'll be very close to the first down. Chris Adams, the ball carrier. Officials look it over. Very close indeed. It's uh, 
So looking where the ball's at, I don't see any hesitation. It's short, but because uh, it's right in front of us. But nevertheless, when you get within half a yard, it's best to check. So we will have the measurement, and uh, they're stretching the change out. It is short, definitely by the length of a football at best. So Denison will be faced with a third and very short situation, and leading the defensive signal calls on the field for Hampton Sydney is number 89. Once again, that's Chris Bell. Uh, I have to check the rosters or anything to see if there's any relation between the Bells that were uh, on the floor, on the field leading the, the line. Chris Bell and now the uh, injured Bell for uh, the Tigers. Tigers on defense staying their familiar 5-2. That defense has given up 15 points. Their offense have only scored 10. Straight ahead par of football. Nothing fancy right now as the big fullback just going Jonathan straight Fuller. ahead on first down. Picked up the first Stop down Jack very easily as they were just short of it. And uh, nothing fancy right now for Big Red. Keeping the clock running, getting some big yardage. Nothing fancy at all. Once again, they're moving the ball, so you can't complain about that. Their second first down here in the third quarter of play. And they're doing it with a variety of things. They are running outside, and they are doing a lot of running up the middle. But uh, we haven't really seen them going with much of what you'd call gadgetry. Right now, you just want to get everybody settled in the position, run the basics, learn the basics. If Kohler is stopped at the line of scrimmage, but still gets forward for a yard or two. Donna's Stop defensive Keith stop, Wadsworth. Keith Wadsworth. So Wadsworth in on a tackle, but not before they pick up some decent yardage on first. Looking through the Tigers book here, we look for Coach Joe Bush. He's in the um, VMI Sports Hall of Fame back home. And we'll go into a little bit of his history here in a second. His defense trying to come up with a big play, and he overshot his target. Adams overshoots Strasburg. He was over, or ball, excuse me. I, I only said it three times, five years, yeah. <laughs> when he may have graduated, I'll finally get his name right. Overshot him at the 20. Would have been a big play. Stopped the clock at 827. Going over the coach's statistics, uh, he was assistant at VMI back in 70 through 84. Head coach at Bridgewater in 1985. Got off to a rough start like a lot of first-time coaches do, 1-8, and eight, and come right here to Hampton Sydney in 86 where he turned the program quickly into an 8-2. and two. His overall coaching record then as a head monitor is 9-10. and 10. Over to Miller, wide open at the 40. To the 30, and down there, first down, Big Red. Chris Adams passes complete to Willie Aracho. Aracho is the man, his first catch of the year. Tackle made by... To split in, he's a senior, 5'11", 205. I think you noticed that time, uh, Strasbaugh had the opportunity to throw a block that would have sent the play for six. Brian missed it, and he realized it, but uh, I don't think he anticipated Aracho's cut outside instead of inside, but nice job by Aracho. Uh, notice Adams is a left-handed thrower, and really... Isn't quite smooth with that yet, but uh, he's getting there. So Aracho gets on the uh, play sheet with his first completion. There they go again. They're running screen near side. Good block there at the 30. We got a flag. It'll be it'll come back as Mulligan rumbles to the 12, but it's going to come back. We just mentioned how Denison staying with the fundamentals and doing the basics, and they open things up with three consecutive passes. Obviously, the clip will be called, the clip will be accepted by the defense, and we'll move it back. 7.49, so a lot of time to go here in what's turning out to be a rather lengthy third quarter of play, and uh, the numbers keep increasing at the frat house. Uh, what time were the post game festivities scheduled to get started? We must be close, but uh, they're all standing outside watching the game, so the play is negated. It's back to the 45-yard line where it'll be first, and the good distance call it now. 26. Next week, Allegheny comes here to play Denison. So come out and support the local college. Good friend of ball. Of course, it'll start at 1.30 in the afternoon. Hampton-Sydney will play Guilford in her home opener. Under heavy pressure, it's incomplete and a little high with the push, but he's going to get away with it. Chris Adams' pass intended for Brian Strong. Chris Bell, no more team for the interception. He did get his hand on the, the ball. Denison, that time, must have gone with an offset line because somebody just came right over a, a tackle position that looked vacant and almost got Adams as he threw the ball. 
So uh, I don't know if we had a, a mix up on the play or what, but a good defensive play by Hampton Sydney turned in. It now makes it second and 26. We talk about Allegheny next week's opponent. They have a scout here up in the booth, and I asked him at halftime. He says, I haven't seen anything different. Do the same thing every year, but they do it very well. Tucks it in, picks up a yard at the most, strung out the defense that time, and a good play carrier. by number 38 in the Tiger Stop uniform. David Simsic. Simsic, defensive lineman, come in. So he's getting a second half play in time and does the job. Third down along for the, the big red of Denison. Like you said, that's, a, I think, a very correct description of Denison. They're doing the same thing as they do every year with the single wing, though. That gives you about 50 options to try to prepare for. And there are new faces, but the execution in the first half, at least, is very good. Right now, with thanks to a penalty, maybe not. Third down and 24. Adams throws it out in the wing. Toller gets it inside of 40 to the 38. Just a safety pass, and now let's see if they can get the punt inside the 10 and angle it out of bounds. Nettleman will do the punting, number 65. He comes out on the field. So that defense bend a little bit, but didn't break. And the offense will have, you know, another shot at it here in the third quarter with 621 left. Well, when you put a team down by 25 yards to get a first down, that helps you quite a bit. But Dennison tried to go with some big plays and nothing worked. And we will await the punt. He tries and angles out of bounds. And he carries the end zone on the bounce. So it's the touchback. And that's where the Tigers were started off. 6.04 left to go in the third quarter. No score here in the third quarter. So same as the halftime score, 15 to 10. Denison leads it. And the Big Reds uh, are on the defense. Hampton Sydney, once again, they're, they're starting deep in their own territory. Now they showed that they mo could move the ball a little bit uh, when we got the uh, their first possession of the second half. But... We'll see what happens this time. We've got a pair of sevens on the uh, near end, one on the offense, one on the defense. And Denison's seven is Jones. They'll go to cut it to number one. Wallace picks up some decent yardage over the 25, out to the 26. Stopped by Bob Wade. Bob Wade, number eight from Lakewood High School, makes the tackle. W Wallace is from Richmond, Virginia. Joe Reynolds is injured, and uh, he's back about 10 yards behind the Denison huddle. Uh, right ankle, I believe, giving him trouble as he was limping. The official blew the whistle to call Dale Guggins onto the field. And while we uh, have this delay for another injury, very clean, very well-played ball game for the first game of the season. Leon, penalty-wise, Denison's been whistled for three. Hampton, Sydney for one. They've all been major penalties, though. So we've had one procedure call against Hampton, Sydney, but uh, really, other than that, everything has been of the 15-yard variety, a couple of clips, and and a late hit, but uh, for the first ball game of the season, a very clean game, and they compliment both coaches for excellent preparation. Well, both teams, you know, have winning traditions here. Of course, like we said, two times defending uh, champs right here in our own league is the Denison Big Red. Last year, this Tiger Ball Club came in second down in Virginia, so they know how to play the game. Eight and two record against a nine and one record last year. High formation, second down, we'll call it five. Straight ahead, power football. They pick up the first down. Kelly's loose to the 40. David Kelly, the ball carrier. Tackle made by Grant Jones. Kelly from Virginia. He's a merit student. Strong candidate this year for the academic All-American honor. And he's co-captain besides. So that's the kind of, kind of player that these two schools recruit. First in the classroom then on the football field or basketball, whatever it may be. Kelly possibly an academic All-American. First down, first first down, the second half for the Tigers. Again, Wallace, who gets a second half start, gets maybe a yard at, at the most. He's gang tackled and dropped right there. Third quarter score, boy, they've got a good ball game going up uh, up north. This Mountain Union is now leading Wooster 13 to 10. I don't know which place the game's being played at, but we know it's up north either way, up at Mountain Union. So uh, good start up there. Jewel number six flanked out to the near side. They got two ends to our side. They come out of the eye. They'll fake it. He rolls out. He's looking for Jewel. He throws a deep sideline. He throws it short at the 45. 
single coverage that time. Montgomery, number nine, had a man to man coverage. So Jewel was your tended receiver. They'll bring up third down and nine. Stop the clock with 434, third quarter. Same score as halftime, 15 to 10, the Big Red lead it. The backup quarterback's also a junior for this team, John Rose from Charlottesville, Virginia. Laramore, deep over the middle, overshoots his man, interception. Stapleton running it back inside the 40 to the 39. And we got two flags thrown. So Laramore throws it high, and Stapleton, the sophomore, returns it. So let's see what the flags are about. That's what happens when you throw it deep over the middle. Well, the defense is just as good as the offense. They clip. But uh, we have the clipping on the return by Dennison and an unsportsmanlike conduct against Hampton Sydney. So that was a dead ball foul. We'll just have to let the officials sort things out. Leon, you are talking about the academics a moment ago, uh, about the academic All-American, the fine runner from Hampton Sydney uh, in uh, David Kelly. That's right. Thank you. It's interesting to note that just on me, Grant Jones on Dennison, who is a defensive co-captain or defensive captain, is a Rhodes Scholar candidate. And uh, that is a very, needless to say, elite category to be in, one of five or six in the country. I forget what the, the numbers are there, but uh, nevertheless, wish him the best of luck in the academics, hopefully here in the uh, athletic part of it. So the 15-yard... Clipping Hampton against Dennison, Sydney, Hampton Sydney, 15 yards for unsportsmanlike conduct, and uh, I guess they're just going to let things lie, lie pat. For those of you that have been following Dennison for a few years, uh, might you know want to know Chris Briggs, I understand, is in banking in Boston now. Uh, the only college player ever to rush for 4,000 yards and pass for 2,000. David Elliott, who was an outstanding Dennison football player and baseball player, has signed a professional contract and is in is the New York Yankee organization. Now the season's over, obviously, since he's not with the big club and all the minor leagues are finished, but uh, the Big Red to have a professional athlete. The last time I remember a Denison player attempting a professional career was uh, Dan Perro, the punter, several years ago, who had a uh, free agent tryout with the Pittsburgh Steelers or was drafted in the late rounds, but uh, did not make it to the starting team. From the 40, the blitz is on. Graziano can't bring him down. Now he's going to get hit. Gets away, throws at the 50. Complete the mulligan. To the 30, to the 20, one man to beat, he runs him out of bounds. Inside the fifth, we'll call it right at the 15. I tell you, what footwork that time by Chris Adams. And Mulligan dances down the sideline. Now that's the difference between a regular 5'10", 6'2", 100-pound quarterback and putting a guy that likes to run with the football, pass maybe if I can type of person in that situation. He's able to fight off and out muscle the would-be tacklers, and even with a man pulling them down through a pass for a completion. Chris Adams from Parma, Ohio, went to Normandy High School. In motion, Marston. They fake it to him, straight ahead, Toller. Maybe a yard, we'll give him two, I guess, as he gets inside the 15. Dennison unofficially three first downs in the third, or four first downs Donna in the, first, the, ball in the third quarter. Three by, by pass, Chanel. only one by run. They're reversing their tendencies from the first half. Chenault, the senior linebacker, made the stop, six foot 205. As we have another injured player. Officials, timeout. 3.36, Leon, to go here in the third quarter play. Dennison is threatening. This will be a good chance to get a play called as the injured player for Hampton Sydney is Chip Umberger. And as he goes off the field, we'll take a cable five timeout. Dennison up to the line of scrimmage. Second down and nine from the 14. They lead it by five. Trying to add on. Adam on the sweep. Has a blocker. Toller throws it. He breaks it to the 10. Run out of bounds at the nine. Good block that time by the up back. 
Toller, number 34. Nice job. Like I said, he needed the one block, and he got it. That just sprung the play down inside the 10. It's going to be three yards short of a first down, but you set yourself up now with a third and short, and uh, you've got a good opportunity here for the first down and possibly six points. to the five-yard line and gain tackle there. Carried by Chris, Chris Bell, number 89, the first guy to hit him. Chris Bell. Chris from Richmond, Virginia, 6'3", 195-pound junior. I believe he's got the first down inside the five as we wait for the officials. They're going to come for measurement. Uh, once again, looking at the chain, so they look to me like they were set on the one side of the five and the ball's on the other side of the five. That's just because they're keeping it a couple yards away from the line of scrimmage. So uh, it's going to be close, but uh, you'll get to see it as soon as we do. The stretch is out there, and he's got the first out. So Denison, first and goal. Inside the 10-yard line, a market right at the 5. Five yards to go to pay dirt. Three oh eight left to go as now the sun is really baking the field. Turned out to be a good afternoon here. First football game from the beautiful Deeds Field. You can just see in the panorama view of the facility, some of the leaves are beginning to change as we've got uh, several shades of green and some orange and yellow showing up. Ball's coming a little bit quicker than some people would like, but it's coming. From the five, everybody in tight. They go to power football. They go to Chris Adams. He'll walk in for the touchdown. Chris Adams, the ball carrier. It's his third Adams. touchdown of the day as Adams goes sweeps for five yards. And that extends the lead at the 250 mark to 21 to 10, and they'll try and tack on the extra point. Bianchi, number 12, will try the kick. Had a high snap from center for one time that was no good. Then he tried a two-point conversion, and that was no good. So let's see if they play it straight and try and get one through the uprights. Chris Adams, the senior, will hold. Bianchi has it blocked, so you can tell that is one area of the game that they'll work on here this coming week. Oh, and you take a look at number 89, Chris Bell at 6'3", and Mike Chenault also in there at six foot, right down the gut. The kick wasn't high enough, and they did a nice job blocking it. Denison can convert on an extra point as they've missed all three of them this afternoon. we have got a chance, Leon. We'll run down the scoring as it is now. 21 to 10, the big red with a little bit of a margin. It was... Uh, Newell recovering a fumble in the end zone, and Hondulis putting in the point after for Hampton Sydney as they had a 7 0 lead. Then Jim Bianchi, a 42 yard field goal. Chris Adams, a one yard touchdown. Chris Adams, a three yard touchdown for Denison in the second quarter. And uh, Jim Hondulis had the 23 yard field goal for Hampton Sydney just before halftime. So at halftime, it was 15 to 10, and now our only score so far in the second half, Adams with a five yard run. So Chris with three touchdowns in the afternoon, and uh, I would say as his first game as the heir apparent to Chris Spriggs' legacy is doing a nice job as he's running the offense, they're mixing things up well. He's a little work on the passing game that's coming. He's shown a definite improvement in that over some of his play from last year. And uh, I think he's doing a very nice job. And he's getting some pressure from a couple of freshmen Jim from that starting position, including a, high, including a high school quarterback that they brought in from an Indian reservation, if I recall, out in Nevada who played single wing in high school, so he's got some experience in that position. And that's, needless to say, always gets the upperclassmen to play just a little bit harder. Jack Barber, one of the deep men, number 44. He'll run up on it. He'll catch it at about the 11. Trying to get behind that wedge, and he does so, and he breaks it down the far sideline. To the 50, to the 40, and out of bounds. Big return, gets him right back into it. Jack Barber, as Barber takes character. it, got some good blocking in like midfield. Jim they've returned a couple very nicely and broken some open, and they've been doing a nice job on the sidelines, getting that wedge set. And uh, nice, nice runners with speed that time. Well, we've seen it every time, really, but uh, a good job. That's maybe one thing Denison's going to have to work on. Their kick coverage, not that sharp right now, and it's going to be first and 10 inside the Denison 41 for Hampton Sydney. Three-man defensive line as they take the ball carry down at the 35-yard line. Kazmarek, number 53, the inside linebacker. Kazmarek. Kazmarek. George Carter. Is a letterman 
from Franklin, Ohio. Went to Franklin High School, 6'1", 185 pounds. He's in his senior year. Kazmarek and Holland, the two men that will anchor this defense this year for the Big Red. They run to the short side of the field. He'll get nowhere. He's hit by a host of defensive players. Dennison going with an offset 52, it looks like, as they're leaving a gap on the uh, left on our near side David of Kelly the field. The they had everything stacked up towards the short Dan side, Holland. so there wasn't much room to run to start with because you're going to the short side. But when you had three defensive linemen all lined up real tight, there was no opportunity for a hole. But I think we're finding out that they're running, lining up opposite Kelly. Whichever way Kelly goes, here we go with the lineup again. You'll see on the far side they've got three. And this time Barth gets the ball, and he finds an opening and gets down uh, for the first down inside the 20, or inside the 30, down near the 25. So Barth does the job, Barth. picks up the first down. Stop by Dan that, that's their first first down here in the second half. Barth from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, the junior, 6'2", 196. Under two minutes to go in the third quarter, clock is stopped. 21 to 10, your score as Dennison on time defense out. takes his timeout. So Hampton Sydney with a score here could be right back in if they trail by uh, 11 now, but once again, you give them a touchdown and a conversion, and they're really right back in this ballgame as we do have a timeout on the field. In the third and quarter, it's going to be 21 to 10 the score. Half. Dennison leading over Hampton Sydney. We'll be back with more from Deeds Field right after you watch this Cable 5 timeout. as Hampton Sydney lines up in the I formation. They've got a receiver to each end of the field, and they're going to go up the middle. That's going to be their runner, Kelly, breaking off first man through the left side of the center, and he gets down near the 20 for a first down uh, play. That's a pretty good pickup for a second down play. They'll be looking at a five-yard situation. Coming up on Cable 5, Denison coverage this year. Olivet College comes in to battle the Big Red on the 26th. And on October 31st, what a weekend for Halloween, Case Western and Denison. We'll have Lincoln Valley, Newark Catholic that same day also. He just tried to squeeze out a yard or two, and he did do that, but it'll bring up third down or short of the first down. Dan Laramore. So Laramore trying to get a touchdown here, we're under a minute to go left in the third quarter. His team trails by 11, 21-10. Reaching into your bag of tricks. <laughs> this is it. We hit the big time. How we're doing college a couple times. I'm just waiting for that call from the big place. You'll keep waiting. Kenyon. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the Lords of Kenyon. The keep on it's the option. Cuts it in. He gets tackled. <laughs> Two string tackles. <laughs> Montgomery. Number nine is the man who grabbed the uh, forty dollar pairs of uh, cleats and hang on. Uh, a new, a new way of doing the shoestring tackles definitely is like to foot up in the air and just try to pull them back. Uh, nevertheless, it saved a first down. It was a very big defensive play as he had some help over there. But uh, Hampton Sydney taking a lot of time getting a play called. Well, no, they're not. They're waiting for the end of the quarter to run out. They don't want to go towards the, the, the hillside. Quarter. They want to go over towards Livingston Gym. The third quarter is history. And this will give Hampton Sydney as the quarterback now goes over to talk to the coach a chance to discuss a fourth and inches situation from the 18-yard line. Dennison leads at the end of three quarters from Deeds Field, 21 to 10. We'll be back with the fourth and decisive quarter in this afternoon's Division III college football game on Cable 5 right after you watch this. All game, 21-10, your score. With Ed Jobes, I'm Leon Malanzi. I hope you enjoyed today's contest. And, and every weekend this fall, as you mentioned, Cable 5 brings your high school sports along with some college games. You can hear the fans down below chaining on, getting the team fired up, hoping for the big defensive play. It's fourth and inches 
No question, you got to go for it. Boy, he's hit and stacked up, but he should have fell forward enough to get it. He only needed a few inches. As Barth puts his head down, he gets the first down. Chris Lacey, 57, comes into the ball game for the Big Red on defense. And Chris Thomas, a linebacker, comes out. Ball's on to 16. Just starting the fourth quarter. We hope you enjoyed it. We enjoyed it bringing it to you. Laramore, the junior, trying to get his team on the board again. He gives it to Bath. Tackle as he sweeps the corner. He turned the corner, though. It had an opening, but Barth just couldn't get away. A nice job, a little misdirection, and a quick hitter over the left side. Nice play call, and it picks up good yardage, maybe eight yards on the play inside the 10 now, near the nine, so it's going to be second and short. Really sets up shop for Hampton Sydney now, so he's got three cracks to pick up a couple yards for a first down. you got nine yards to go for the touchdown. This could probably be an excellent opportunity for a pass. See how they play it. They'll have a man in motion. They'll go away from the motion. Cuts it up. Barth doesn't score, he does he? They're going to mark him just short. So it's first and goal. They'll have four cracks to get a yard. So the last two plays, Barth has done the job. Trying to get in the end zone. He carried 41 times last year, this Cherry Hill High School graduate. He rushed for 222 yards. See the coach across the way for Hampton Sydney really giving a lot of enthusiasm and jumping up, really fired up. You're not seeing that much emotion both ways. This is one of those uh, fairly close ball games right now as uh, Barth Dove put the ball over the end line, but the knee hit first. Does he carry the mail three times in a row? Yes. Second effort does not get him in. He was hitting the backfield, lunged forward. Carrier. Let's Stop see if we can get the number. Kaz Merrick, the linebacker, 53, made the stop. And once again, it was a hit at the line of scrimmage. Actually, I think Chris Lacey got in at the ankle to knock Barth off balance, and then they finished up from there. But it's going to be inches to go. It's only a second and inches, not fourth, as the yard marker had indicated. And once again, they start with the power eye, but they had uh, Kelly in motion before. Power football straight ahead. Touchdown, I believe. No, there is a single. Barth does it. Carries the ball four times in a row. And Barth gets the touchdown. He was hit in the backfield, though, Leon. But when you only have one yard to go and you've got great second effort that Barth has shown, it doesn't take much to get into the end zone. He did so at the 13.02 mark, fourth quarter. And we've got ourselves a close game. Honduras, the sophomore, will try for the extra point. Well, then we're going to go for two, I believe. They just took him out. Go for two. So head coach. You go for two, you set up a field goal tie situation. So you might as well do it. We'll see what they come out has. They'll have wide outs, both sides, eye formation, going for two points. Long count, now the man in motion. They flood the near side, they've got flags. It'll be intercepted in the end zone, and we'll see what the flags are all about. Motion. The man that went in motion did not do a, a clean cut and started towards the line of scrimmage and then out more of an angle than a straight cut. So it uh, went for not as the ball was intercepted by Dennis and Chris Lacey again. He had visions of a 102-yard interception return and just coasted his way past the uh, end zone, realizing it's the point after. And that's actually a big play for Dennison once again. That takes away the opportunity for a tie game in a field goal situation. These two schools have played twice previously, and uh, one game has been a big red victory, and one game has been a tie. Back in, I believe it was 82, one of the first games Webb Dennison's we did on Cable 5, a 0-0 tie. I remember that's the only 0-0 game we've ever done. Talk about a lot of excitement and nothing happening. That was it. But uh, nevertheless, the big red lead now 21-2. 16. Still plenty of time to go. There's, they'll be teeing the ball up on the near uh, hash marks and uh, doing the kicking will be number uh, I see a uh, 2 and make it a 12. That'll be Hundrulis as he is the extra point kicker. Or check that. Is that just a straight 2, Leon? Adam Aguirre. It is. Adam Aguirre. Number 2 will be doing the kicking. So we've seen 3 to 4 men attempting to kick Adam for Algier Hampton kicking off Sydney for here this Hampton afternoon Sydney. as they call it Algier now. But nevertheless, you've got to remember the onside kick is a possibility. It worked very well against Keith last night. The Big Red gave up 100 points even last year. 
that defense. And this year, they've been up 16 in the first quarter. He aims it to the far sideline. Down to kicker. It'll be Montgomery. He dances and gets hit and drops right there. And you can see across the way, the visiting ball club has gotten some momentum. Oh, the coach started it, and now the players are responding. I think they found their starting kicker in Algier as he put that one back, and uh, Montgomery had to back up from the 20 to the 10 to make the catch, so he lost all forward momentum. And then after he made the catch, he barely got across the 25 before he was sandwiched by the defense from the Tigers. No, he did not make the 25. The ball is marked at the 24. So the Big Red deep in their own territory with the lead, but it's under seven points, and a lot of time to go in the fourth quarter. Have got to get some momentum going offensively. They'll keep it on the ground to Chris. He breaks it at the 30. He angles to the 35, 40, and runs out of bounds and gets bumped, <laughs> knocked over the water. And now there's a late flag. Better late than never, I guess. That's what the, they might say about the hit. It wasn't Barber, much of a hit, but it was contact after, the after the fact. And I think you have to say that is a correct call. It wasn't flagrant, but it was made, and the penalty had to be thrown. It was clearly out of bounds. He just touched him, you know, reached down, touched him, but it was there. And he did the old uh, New York Giants Gatorade routine, hitting the water bottle, but he got himself as he took out Denison's supply of water and ice. So, oh, a beautiful play. If we'd had a 4-4 sprinter there, that was gone for six. If he had everybody faked out. But uh, an excellent run at 15 yards after the fact. Denison now setting up shop at the 42-yard line of Hampton Sydney. The foul was on Umberger, number 41, hit him out of bounds. So Dennison, great field position at the 42 with first and 10. Want to come right down and march and match the score. They fake it, they'll keep it to Toller at the 40 to 35 to 30. Gets by one man, a straight arm out of bounds. We'll call it inside the 25, down to the 24. Oh, that's Donis Toller running. We've seen it for years at Zanesville High School. He really could riddle the defense with the best of them. And a nice run, as you can see, just moving a little bit, the weight one way or the other, cutting around and cutting it back, using his blocking well. And Dennison now at the 24-yard line, first and 10. Seven first downs in the second half for Dennison. Four of those on the run. Dennison with that unbalanced line. Mulligan barks the signal. Toller fakes it. He'll keep it straight ahead. Gets a block to the 20. Bulls his way to the 15 and dances to the 14. What a nice run by Toller. Once again, he's just using his block well. He's not one of these give him the ball and like a flash and set the line or through the line. He just picks his way, finds the best way to go, and gets the best yardage you can. It is another first down for Dennison. And Bianchi's getting his leg warmed up as he's anticipating some action, hopefully for one and not three. But uh, a good drive. It's the third play or fourth play, and they've moved the length of the field. Davis, from the defensive back, had to come up and make the stop, but it was too late. It's first and ten from the 14. Dennison trying to extend their lead. Adam trying to get to the corner. Beats his man, cuts it inside, and he's hit and dropped right there at the five. Had some good speed there as no containment by the defensive line. No containment at all, but they had a lot of men in pursuit. And he had just enough of an angle and just enough foot speed to beat the defense as he was about to get popped twice behind the line of scrimmage. Instead, he gets nearly 10 yards on the play. In fact, he does get 10 yards on the play. The Big Red have a first down and goal inside the five. To what Coach Piper brings in. From the five yard line, 21 16 to score, 12 02 left to go in the contest. Dennison trying to extend that lead. Their defense just gave up a touchdown, and the offense is trying to match it. From the five, the crowd into the go chance. Adams looking for touchdown number four. He won't get it. He stood up. No. Bell rang his bell on that one. Stop by Chris Bell. They mark it at the four. He gained a yard. Todd Pryor, 64, offensive guard, comes in with the play. He's a shuttle man with Jeff McCourt. They need four yards on second down. Clock running. Adam, reverse, looking for a pass. Throws it. He throws it into the turf, no good. 
not a bad pass. He threw it where it could only be re caught by a man Chris in a red jersey, pass. not a white jersey. He put Rogers. it at the feet of his intended receiver. I Broken believe the Reigns have come at last. The umbrellas and the jackets go out now. And uh, the Big Red have been stymied at the five-yard line. It's now third and five. But once again, you got to give Adams some credit on the pass. It wasn't thrown to be intercepted. It was uh, a safe pass. He tried to hit El Racho with the pass. Aracho has caught one pass tonight. Third down from the five. The sweep. Adams gets away in the backfield at the ten. Dances to the five. He's dragged down right there at the four. Say he stayed in bounds. Good defensive stand so far this time by the Tigers. Well, you don't have that much room to operate right now either. And the linebackers can all pinch the line of scrimmage. Your defensive backs are staying within five yards of the play. And this is where the single wing might bog down a little bit. It's a fourth down. They've only picked up one yard on three tries. And I'm not sure if Biachi is in there or not. I don't think so because we've got 11 men in the huddle, 10 blockers, and one person who will run the ball. We'll see what happens, Leon. Well, they take down the field goal. They're going for the touchdown. 21 to 16 to score. They run inside counter to Marston, and he gets in for the touchdown. Fourth and go, Mark Marston runs an inside scissor play, got the block off tackle and squeezes in for the touchdown. Beautiful execution, Adams rolled to his right. He had all kinds of daylight to keep it, but instead they went with the little counter, the misdirection, something we had not seen today. And Marston, instead of running wide, cut it in the middle. Six points, nice play. Marston did a good job reaching the end zone, not only with his body, but reaching with the ball to make sure it got across that line in case he didn't. Bianchi would try for the extra point. They're 0 for 4 today. This one's up, and they got one. 10.32. Time left on the scoreboard. Your score, the home team, Denison University, 28. The visitors, the Tigers, 16. And while we've got the opportunity, Denison, boy, that is a big, big series of downs to respond after Hampton Sydney has scored. Number one, you take all the momentum away from the Tigers, all that enthusiasm we saw moments ago jumping up and down and really fired up. That's well, down in the bottom of the tennis shoes now. You've bring it momentum to the, your today. side of the field, University but uh, of you've also four, given yourself a little more comfort margin-wise, and that's the most important thing. And I remember listening to the Denison uh, people up here in the press box talking to somebody who saying maybe this isn't the biggest crowd considering that you've got the men's and the women's soccer team playing, the women's volleyball team all playing today. You're losing some of your student uh, support to all those different functions. And unfortunately, the soccer team lost to University of Charleston 4-1 to today as uh, Denison's soccer team in the last few years has uh, done very well in the Division Three playoffs and uh, gone to the national playoffs, as, as has Ohio Wesley and a couple other schools from the NCAEC, which is... <laughs> very well no becoming known for a, an excellent sports league and it was originally set up for academics so uh, we're getting ready for the kick and the rain is falling it's very dreary and gray and dark outside and Bianchi puts it on the ground short kick at the 35 the receiver to the 40 he'll hit and drop right there and he's down Dan Newell is a tight end on offense and that's where they'll start so all night afternoon or night long kickoff returns one way or another the Tigers have always had good field position Montgomery. As we brighten up the picture for you as it got dark outside uh, here at Deeds Field, as we've seen everything from sunshine to low scud clouds. I tell you, Ohio weather, it's always changing. This must be the residue from Ohio Stadium, but from all the tailgate parties before the game, you know. Nevertheless, Hampton Sydney face now with 10.26 on the clock, trailing uh, by 12, 12 points. So they've got to get two scores, and they need to get them in a very short period of time. They'll probably go to the air, you would think. And yes, they do. They run the draw, and he drops the ball, picks it up. He'll lose about five, back to the 35. So they try to run the draw to slow down that defensive rush, and he lose five. Needless to say, with the rain that is really coming down now, as even I can see it with the naked eye, let alone what the camera can show, that ball is getting today. loose. And Dennis Rick is set up three, under the tree. Dennison beat Bethany in women's soccer three to one, so at least we get a split out of the weekend. But uh, nevertheless, the rain is really coming down now, and the cheerleaders are all standing there saying, we're getting soaked. <laughs> and so is our cameraman, Rick Reinhardt, but he's doing a nice job today, Rick. Keep it up. 
Second and 15, he throw it over the middle. It's complete. Looking for a block. He can't find one. He'll be sure of the first down. But a good pass and a run for about a 15-yard game. Larimore so Larimore Steve hits Waski, the wide receiver. By Rex Stapleton. Stapleton, the sophomore, makes the tackle. Unofficially, I have them one of three passing in the second half. So uh, can't you know, judge for that statement. But Waski that time was doing a lot of lateral running instead of just heading straight up the field where he only needed three yards, four yards for the first down. Now they're faced with that third and three situation. If he would have just head, head for the markers at midfield, you know, don't worry about the fancy running or trying to pick up a block that really wasn't going to exist. They would have been in much better shape. Barth to the far side. He'll get the first. Fumble. I think the Big Red got it, and they do. And a kill a drive faster than anything. We'll see if the Big Red can take the turnover and score. As Ed was talking, I was looking at Waski. He has eight. Last year, he uh, caught eight passes for 16 yards on average, but Holland picks up the interception. Chris Gonzalez on the fumble recovery, number 1-6 for the Big Red on the defense. And Gonzalez, I think he went out injured earlier in the game, a linebacker, six foot, 195-pound junior. He got healed real quick, and he doesn't feel any pain at all right now. So that drive... It stops for Hampton Sydney. Now the Big Red take over an excellent field position at their 46. See what the Red can do it. 9.01 left to go. First turnover in the ball game for the Tigers. And we're going to have an offside, I believe, on number 71 who jumped the gun on defense. If it is, it'd be Scott Brooks, the nose guard. Or was he drawn? He jumped and then he reacted. Oh. I got the impression he jumped, he didn't make contact, and then a Denison player may have moved because he immediately reached out, touched the helmet, Denison and pointed. So uh, obviously a Denison procedure. player was the one that made the first move, or in the eyes of the official made the first move. And uh, the we're getting more quarter, scores. And they're also giving it over the PA system right now. So I'm seven. impressed with this operation up here this year, getting these scores and everything just right off the bat. Case Western's going down to defeat us. They are trailing 24-7 to seven with 11 minutes to go. Hiram's playing the game of their life probably tonight, this afternoon. That's good to see for the Denison Big Red. First and 15 down to 41, and we got more flags. It's going to be first and 20 now, Leon, as the hill right side of the wing moves. And uh, needless to say, this isn't the way to start a drive when you're set up near midfield. Nine minutes and one second, you're already Denison killing the clock with this type of illegal procedure. So the Tigers on defense hanging in there. The most wins this ball club has ever had was in 1971. Ten victories, and they won all ten of those in a row. Postseason appearance, they've been there three times. Newt Rackney bowled twice in 70 and 71. They lost both times. And in 77, the NCAA Division III playoffs, they lost to Allegheny. Oh, excuse me, Albany State. So Allegheny. So they're 0-3 they're in playoffs. Yeah. Warming defense led by big number 92. Pryor. Chip Pryor, a nice job on the play as Toller had nowhere to go. Uh, once again, I think we were mentioning off mic that I think Pryor. Dennis in the last two years in a row has made the playoffs. And the year before that, Case Western win as the NCAC's had the last three years of team get into the playoffs. It's kind of a funny playoff situation when you look at it. 16 teams from all over the country, but to take four by region. And in this part of the country, the eastern part of the country, you've got more stronger teams than you do in the western part so you could have a team that's ranked in the top 10 of the country not go to the playoffs because of the way it's set up that way and Denison that was the case three years ago when they had a team that lost one ball game all year but because they only take four from the region they were the odd man out and Allegheny I think may have gone or uh, Washington and Jefferson out of Washington PA was the other team that went but uh, Nevertheless, that's just the way things are set up. When you're in a football part of the country, you have to put up with that sometimes. It's fourth down, at three yards, or correction, third down, and 21 yards to go for Denison. The new scoreboard, I'm still having a hard time getting used to it. I thought it was fourth and 37. That's the fourth period in the 37-yard line. It's a nice scoreboard. Very impressive. Third down, they'll just keep it on the ground. They run a power play. Chris cuts it up at the 40. Bulls his way to about the 44. Short of the first down, of course. Made by Tommy Graziano. And Graziano, number eight, getting up slow, makes a tackle. Graziano's been about a dozen plays. Play. Holding a big red. We'll think he'll probably refuse it to get the ball back at the 740 mark. Poor Tony, Tommy Graziano that time as he made a nice hit. Nice stick with the shoulder. The shoulder that he hurt in the first half, and that's why he stayed down for a while. You can just see him grimace and stay down as 
after that play as he really got stung and he felt that one and he's uh, going to be shaking it off for a little while. The holding penalty against Dennison will be declined as you said, Leon. They want the ball right now, forcing the Big Red into their uh, third punt in the or fourth punt in the ball game. However, this time Nettleman will have plenty of room to let his leg go to work instead of trying to kick it inside the five yard line from about the 35 he's going to be standing at his own 30 with a wet ball and slippery turf and a fairly worn spot on the field the hampton sydney has two men back deep and it's going to be butler and umberger beautiful kick coming down to barber at the 10. he's hemmed in he's down good defense that time by gary joseph who's a linebacker for dennison number three the first man down so Nettleman gets off a rock. Received by Jack Barber, the tackle made by Gary Joseph. 38 yard punt, really no return. With a fine soccer school, how did he ever get on the football team? I don't know, but that was a nice kick, a rocket. And uh, he turned it over well, and Hampton Sydney gets one yard on the return, so they're faced at the 11 yard line. A uh, 89 yard drive is necessary to get one of the two scores needed to get into the game. Tigers quickly out of the huddle. One man back. Gonna go up top. He's looking one way, he's throwing there. And he overshoots his man at the 40 yard line. No fake there, he came right out and he looked at the far sideline, Nowoski. Obviously they have to go to a passing situation when you put the one man back and split two on either side and you're pretty obvious you're gonna go with the pass. Surprising we haven't seen him go back to the three man wide formation they ran in the first half of play. That's worked a couple of times for them. Last time these two teams met were back right here in 1983. And the result was a 35-15 win for the Big Red. So the Tigers have not been welcomed very nicely to this ball field. Man in motion is Wallace. They run to fullback straight ahead. Kelly gets to the 15, but that's not going to do it for you. As that will run the clock down, 6.56 and it is running. Once again, they're trying to go in the gap that Dennison's leaving in that offset front line. David but Kelly, the defense the was playing that well. Tackle if it hits for 10 Chris yards, Lacey, it's a great call. You get the first down. But George if it Carter. doesn't, like you say, it kills the clock, and you're still faced with a third and long situation. As some of the fans are beginning to file out of Deeds Field, the wind's really picking up. Glad we're not doing a high school game tonight. It's not going to be too much fun. And the wave's starting. This Ball club won five games in a row at the end of the season, so they got a five-game winning streak on the line, and it's in jeopardy. Laramore, there's a flag, probably offensive holding. He had some first down yardage, but let's see what the flag's all about. He twists and turns over the 25, the so Laramore gets the first down. Wade, number eight, makes a tackle, but the flag, I think, will bring it back. Illegal use of hands or a hold is the call on the uh, play. A nice run. I'm really impressed with the uh, the running of the quarterback for Hampton Sydney today as he's uh, had a, to scramble a few times. Larimore showing uh, he's got some, some good moves and he's done a nice job today. And not enough points on the board right now, but I think the Hampton Sydney's going to be happy with their quarterback in this year and he's shown that they're going to be off to a good start as the penalty will negate the run and mark him back half the distance. They'll be back. Uh, to the 10-yard uh, line, someone in the press box commented it's a four-yard penalty. But uh, nevertheless, it's going to be third down and 12. As they huddle up at the goal line, as we pan back, you can see it right there at the, about the 10-yard line. 12 yards to go. As Ed mentioned, six minutes left to go in the contest. Time's getting short for the Tigers. I formation. He fakes a dive. He sets up. He fires over the middle. Good catch for the first down at the 25. He went up and took it away. Francis. Dan Excuse me. John Jewell, number six. So Jewell has his second reception of the ball game. Big for the first down, gets him out of danger. John Jewell, 6'2", 195-pound sophomore from Franklin, Tennessee, uh, Battleground Academy. He's one of several players from that academy. Is Once again, you're talking about people going to a prestigious academic school, not just athletics. Laramore is going to go up top every play. He's got a five-man pass pattern. He had Willis open, who beat the line or Wallace beat the linebacker, but he overshot him. Just threw it a little too quick, a little quick hitter, and it's a timing play, but it just was a half a step off. Nice try, but it's going to be an incompletion. Once again, second and ten. It does stop the clock, though. 5:29 left. Denison leads at 28-16. Hey! 
we could, after this play, get our cameraman to widen out and show you from the sky down to the field. I say it sure looks ominous. Drop play. Nowhere to go. He's just hitting the backfield. He'll drop three red defenders right there to make the stop. I see 55 Holland is one of them, and Wallace had no place to go. Letterer is also on the stop. Now we can get Rick to tow it up for a second by the frat house and just show you what we're talking about when we say it's a dreary day here in Denison. There's the frat house, and you go up to the sky. Oh, the camera's a little too bright, but look, <laughs> those are rather ominous-looking clouds, and the rain is really coming down now. Okay, Rick, you can get back to the action. It gives us some idea. <laughs> Thank you, Rick Reinhart, RC sh camera shot, and he's right back on the action before the snap, but the rain's really coming in now, and as is the haze. He needs 12 yards to go, and he's going to get hit and drop for the big loss. Carter, number 78, the defensive tackle. I see Holland, 55, getting up. I tell you, Laramore has been on his back George the last Carter. couple of minutes as George Carter hits him first. He'll have to punt it away with 431 left. So things are looking bright, if you will, for the dent. For the big red of Denison. From his end zone, he gets off a, a punt. Stapleton, the 30. Two men to beat. He's hit and dropped just short of the 20. So Rex Stapleton, the sophomore. George Carter through the key block that time as there was one man at midfield uh, to beat. And one player from Denison knew he couldn't throw a clean block. And Carter that time turned and really gave him a little high high elbow action in the old cross check. And it was a, a good play as Matusevich, the punter, I believe that's the second or third punter we have seen this afternoon, not only made the kick, but also made the saving tackle. So Dennison quickly on the line of scrimmage, 20 yards from another score. The Urbana graduate gets Dennison in great field position at the 21, trying to tack on another touchdown. They're going up top, wide open. Strasbaugh. No, Strasbaugh at the goal line, couldn't reach out and get it. Throwing that into the wind. And, uh, very close to a completion. Strasbaugh reached that 6-2 frame of his out, did not come up with the ball. 6-2, it looks a little bit taller than that. I tell you, the guy doesn't, what he has on is all muscle. He doesn't have any excess baggage, that's for sure. But uh, a nice lunge. Looks nice. It'll go good in the highlights film, but it didn't go for the completion. It's going to be second and 10. Power sweep. Gets these blocked from Toller. Good defensive play, and he loses a yard. Excellent that time by number 44, Jack Barber from his defensive back position. We do have a flag on the play trailing the play, and that would usually indicate the line getting a little tired, uh, grabbed instead of pushed, and that is the case. We have a holding call against Denison. I think we're seeing some fatigue on the field both ways now, and uh, Denison, you see a lot of just either the sweep it or the quick hit, or we're you know, kind of going away from the spin move or the second or third deception on the handoff as the holding penalties decline because there is a loss of two on the play, so it's going to be third and 12 outside the 20 to the 22-yard line is Denison. But uh, the leaves begin to fall with the rain. 3.59 left to go in the contest. That will take the down, third down. 12 to go. 28-16, you score. In motion, Marston. Toller picks up two. That's all he'll get. Toller tripped up by he didn't pick up two. He put the ball in the center of the field, Leon. That's the play. If it picks up great yardage, fine. But if it doesn't, we're going to set ourselves up for uh, Bianchi with the field goal attempt. And this will be about a uh, 30, well, they're going to put the ball down to 27, so I'll call it a 37-yard attempt. But it's right in the middle of the field. Officially, it'll be a 38-yarder for the sophomore. High snap. They get it down. He gets it up. No good. It sailed left. So the 38-yard field goal attempt sails to the left, stops the clock at 315. Our score still stands, 28-16, Denison. Well, Bianchi shows he's got a leg, and uh, he's had several attempts. He's got a field goal at the extra point, but he's been able to kick the ball nicely. Had one block, but uh, that time the wind just caught it, or... He hooked it just at the last minute. You can see it fade off to the side. So Denison comes up empty again. The Big Red getting ready for uh, 
action again next week as I believe they go on the road. They will be playing Allegheny. And uh, check that. The game is right here at 1.30 at Deeds Field. Allegheny from Meadville, Pennsylvania. That's up uh, in the northwestern part of the state. Uh, north of Pittsburgh, west of Erie. We've got a new quarterback. It has it intercepted at the 30 by Wade. Gets to the 15 and down. Ben Palmer's pass intercepted by Bob Wade. Ben Comer, the quarterback, and Wade, you can see him getting congratulated as Comer comes in and throws an interception. So that'll set the offense up and that'll just about do it, I believe, with 3.07 left. Try to, run a, try to run a long out, and Wade just stepped in for the interception. To the 10-yard line. Ed, I got to correct myself. I've been saying Bob Wade's from Lakewood. He's from Newark. No. I think you're right, Leon. The ball carrier. Tackle made by Chip Pryor. Yeah, but I don't think I don't think Hebron got claimed in here. Oh. We'll check it out. They've got, I tell you, we've got about 16 different rosters to choose from in here. We'll it's, it, we're not used to getting all of this. Uh, Wade, number. Yeah. Say they just gave Newark credit for Lakewood instead of Hebron. I'm going to take away that mistake. I had one. <laughs> Run to play down. They're just running the clock out, 225. So, again, the Tigers are going to venture out of Ohio with a loss. And oh, Coach Bush the ball, ball club is going to have to come back and regroup for their it's home opener Mike against Guilford next week. Long trip back. They're talking to the bus driver. He figured if he gets out of here decently, he'll be back at 2.30 in the morning. Yeah, they've got a long trip, and... Uh, going through a lot of mountainous territory. But uh, nevertheless, they were up here in town. I stopped in at a baseball card show this afternoon before I came to the game and happened to be held at the same motel out in Heath that the team was staying as they were all walking out to the buses. They really had their game faces on before then. They came to play. The sweep, trying to get to the end zone. It's a touchdown for number 42. I'm Scott sorry to get his name. Scott Spicer, the running back who came Spicer in on that play. And Spicer showed us good speed to the corner. And again, no containment by the Tigers. And Spicer romps it in. Spicer on the border with 145 left. The kick is up. It's good. Point after so Dennison Jim tacks on the point after. And your score is now a lot further than maybe you would think it would be. Because these two ball clubs played a good first half. But I think Dennison and their maturity has just wear down the Tigers. 35 to 16, your score with 145 left dead. And now it's the all big red. Yeah, but I tell you, the way the game started off, nobody would have guessed that as Hampton Sydney scored the first touchdown in the contest. And uh, they've been in this ball game until the fourth quarter. I don't know if conditioning may be a factor. Uh, both teams are beginning to look tired, as I pointed out. But maybe Denison, once again, when you have the lead, you don't uh, don't get as tired as quickly. So we have a Denison player injured, and I believe it's Chris Adams being administered to on the sidelines. We quickly had a, one of the team trainers, uh, possibly a physician, since he's got a trench coat on looking at him. Uh, I would have to guess it would be a head injury. So that's maybe why we saw Spicer in there, as he just may have taken a, a pretty good shot. I uh, won't speculate on that. It does, it's nothing threatening or a serious injury or anything else like that. But uh, Spicer came in, did the job, and trying to find in the program, he's listed as an underclassman. So, uh, Jim the Yankee kicking off for Dennison. He is a freshman out of uh, Lakewood, Ohio. That's Lakewood by Cleveland, not Lakewood by Newark, as we were <laughs> discussing earlier. But uh, we're getting ready for uh, the Yank Yankees kick now. As, uh, just real quick to come up on Spicer. He is a six foot, 175 pound freshman. Went to St. Egonis High School. Egonis High School up by Cleveland. So he gets on the scoreboard. Out over the 30 yard line where the Tigers will start out on offense. 140 left to go. The contest not in doubt. 35 16. The Big Red's going to win it. Last year they lost their home opener. They wound interior. up with nine in a row. By Chris Thomas. Thomas on the stop. Williams. Dennis and Big Red are ranked 20th in the country in the first Division Three poll, the preseason poll coming out. 
So you'd have to say this game uh, was supposed to go Denison's way, but uh, nevertheless, I think a good start for the Denison program this year. The defense has shown that they can do what they're supposed to do at the jump ball, which either will be incomplete or offense. We'll have to wait which way they call it. They say incomplete. That's what I thought. Both players had their hands on the ball. It's hard to judge from here since we had our backs to the play which way it went. If the intended receiver was Waski, and it was nearly picked off by Gary Joseph. Broken up by Gary Joseph. Nevertheless, so the Big Red did a lot of things right. They have some work that they need to do to improve, but it's a good start. From the 31, second and 10. Comer is a sophomore from Roanoke, Virginia. Fires out of the sideline, overshoots everybody at the 40-yard line. So Comer is showing us he has an arm. Pass intended for Steve Watsky. Six foot, 175 pounder out of Roanoke, went to Patrick Henry High School. That ball was really fired on a line drive. Waski, as soon as the ball left the quarterback's hand, took off downfield, but he was about a second too late or two. Uh, he wasn't uh, able to get a clean cut because of a defender sticking right with him. Kind of, I can't say it was interference or anything like that, but he just had to go around the defender instead of through the defender. And uh, that slowed him up even more. But nevertheless, the timing pattern possibly just didn't quite click. Dennison sending two people back in the deep secondary. Third and ten, a rush is on. Comer connect it away and he's hit and drop. Holland 55 wrapped him up. Ben Comer, the ball carrier, tackle made by Dan Also had Holland. assist by Eric Perwitz once again, another defensive lineman, but uh, Holland, the way he's burying him underneath, I guess you might call it the Holland Tunnel down there going down to the ground with the quarterbacks going in. Living up to all the press releases he had earlier this year. Well, he was in the shadows of Elliott last year. But then again, I think about just about anybody would have been. Fourth down, 21 ball on a 21. Got to get out to the 42-yard line. 47 seconds left. Dennis is going to win it, 35-16. Unless a Hail Mary pass connects here. Comer hit and oh. dropped. Ooh, and his leg was twisted. Let's see if he's all right. Holland got him, and he is all right. Ben Comer, the ball that didn't look good at first. Oh, no, Holland. whenever you see a quarterback just double backwards like that, and then, then a second player come in and hit him. Knees just don't take that kind of uh, uh, move, but I think the second player from Denison laid off on the hit is more of a glancing blow than a, a, a tackle, but Holland, once again, just slid in underneath the protection and got the ankle, and I fourth or fifth sack in the ball game, and Denison will run it down at the 10. Spicer in the backfield, 42, carries the mail, puts his head down, Gets inside the 10, down about the 8-yard line with 27 seconds left. You're not going to see Piper running in. Scott Spicer. He'll probably just here. stay right in the huddle. By Mike Chenault. Chenault, the linebacker, and on a stop. 15 seconds left. <coughs> From the 8-yard line. Five seconds. They'll just fall on it. That's going to end the contest. Spicer drops to his knees. The game is over. The big red of Denison in front of a good home crowd in weather that changed two or three different times. Finally come out and the sun will shine now as they win their home opener. Denison 35. The Tigers of Hampton Sydney 16. And Leon, you can see on the field the players from both schools getting together and congratulating each other. Sportsmanship once again, fine sportsmanship being exhibited. So I guess you could say it's the Baptist over the Presbyterians as Hampton Sydney is the Presbyterian College. And uh, Denison wins it 35 to 16. As we have sirens going off and everything else, somebody hit the wrong button in the emergency squad. Instead of putting it in gear, they hit the siren. Nevertheless, that is the final from Deeds Field. We'll come back to run down the scoring, the statistics, and talk about the victory for Coach Piper. But first, this Cable 5 timeout.
doesn't take long to empty out a deed field as the rain and the wind and everything else that comes with inclement weather is here. But it was a good game for the Big Red, a victory, at least in that respect, 35 to 16. As my name is Ed Jobes, along with Leon Malanzi, we're back at Denison University for the final. And the Denison players are all hanging around on the field for a couple of moments. Uh, number one, because there's a, a camera from NBC down there, and they're probably hoping to say, hi, Mom, or you know, maybe they're going to have something else planned with a couple interviews or the like, or maybe they just can't get in the locker room. I don't know. Anyway, you can see the Denison players and, uh, and the like all huddled up down there smiling for team picture. The Big Red win it. It started off on a very shaky note as Hampton Sydney took the opening kickoff the length of the field thanks to a, a big pass play. And they got on the board with their first possession and led Denison 7 to nothing. A lot of some people up here beginning to wonder. Uh, the Denison defense was supposed to be the strong point. What's happening? What's going on here? But a couple of adjustments were made. The kids just finally got settled in to groove. And they held Hampton Sydney in check for most of the rest of the way, giving up a, uh, a touchdown in the second half to uh, Hampton Sydney, as that was in the fourth quarter for their other score. Then the Big Red responded in their first offensive possession, went the length of the field, and put on a kick, a kicking game exhibition by Bianchi for the field goal. And that made it 7-3, to Hampton Sydney over Denison. And then in the second quarter, the Big Red took control. And from there, the ball game was uh, rather decisive in, in favor of Denison. Now, once again, Hampton Sydney has a lot of good things to work on for next week and in their home opener and Denison's got some things that they have to look forward to that are positive but some things they also need to work on to get ready for Allegheny next week. Looking at the scoring in the contest in the first quarter of play now in particular the 11.57 mark it was Newell recovering a fumble in the end zone for Hampton Sydney as they had a, a, a running play going for the end zone the ball got knocked loose first man on the ball either got a touchdown or a touchback. Newell picked it up in the end zone Honduras had the point after, and it was 7 to nothing Hampton Sydney. And as I mentioned, Jim Bianchi for Denison put in a 42-yard field goal with the 8:23 mark in the first quarter, and it was 7 to 3, the Tigers. And then at 13:39 to go in the second quarter of play, Chris Adams a one-yard run, no point after was made, and it was 9 to 7 Denison. Then Chris Adams again at the 4:31 mark in the second quarter of play, a three-yard run, point after no good, and it was 15 to 7 Denison. 34 seconds to go before halftime. Jim Hondrulis had a 23-yard field goal that made the halftime score 15 to 10 in favor of Denison. And it stayed that way for most of the way through the third quarter. And then at the 250 mark, Chris Adams picked up his third touchdown, his final touchdown in the day, this time on a five-yard run, and Denison led 21 to 10. Then Chris Barth, a fine series for him on Hampton Sydney's possession. At 13.02 to go in the fourth quarter, Barth put it in from one yard out. It was 21 to 16, Denison point after a two-point attempt was intercepted and Denison responded from that drive immediately moved the ball the length of the field with some uh, key passing and some key runs Mark Marston a four-yard run at the 10:32 mark in the fourth quarter Bianchi had the extra point 27-16 Denison and then with a minute 42 to go in the game Scott Spicer freshman first action probably I think the second play he got the chance to to run the offense. He scored on a 10-yard run. The Yankee the point after, and that was the final total, 35-16 to 16 in favor of Denison as they are now replacing the sod on the field and pulling down the goalposts and the speakers. The only time you get to watch them take the goalposts down and you don't have 50,000 fans swarming around them. Now you can see how they do it. But then, and nevertheless, Leon, once again, the single wing for Denison, a wide-open offense, and they were able to utilize it to their... Uh, their best advantage today is the music coming from the frat house again.